Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Tobias Kwan. Uh, let's see. I am a senior concept artist over at Bungie. Uh, I'm working on Destiny 2. Uh, I started off doing animation over at uh, Sheridan College over in Canada. It was mostly 2D traditional animation with like maybe a little bit of 3D. Um, from there, I, my first job was at Ready at Dawn Studios is down in Irvine, California, uh, where I happened to meet Josh. Uh, I think, I don't remember where you were, like Santa Monica or something, or? Uh, yeah, Pima, or yeah probably Santa Monica. Maybe. Yeah, I just, I just knew from all the art center kids around there. Yeah, um, <laughs> we know each other there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I worked on like God of War for the PSP, uh, this PS4 game called The Order 1886. It's like a steampunky thing. And then um, then we worked on some uh, virtual reality games. Uh, it's called Lone Echo. It's like a space simulator type of thing for the Oculus. Um, after, I don't know, about six, seven years, uh, I just kind of left, did some freelance, moved to New York. Uh, I kept working with that studio. Uh, I kind of brought it out to other things in illustration. So like album covers, um, book covers, um, TV stuff like Cartoon Network or Sony Music Japan, um, Castle Rock, I guess that was the latest freelancing I did. Um, and then I guess sometime late last year, uh, I moved here to work at Bungie because I don't know, something new. <laughs> so that's kind of my whole uh, bio, my whole career, I guess, up till now. Um, yeah, that's, that's me, I guess. So um, <laughs> yeah, grain of salt. Uh, I don't want to be very prescriptive or, you know, very specific about how, what you should take out of this. Um, I, I feel like everything as like an artist is just so personal and subjective. Um, what I say here, which is pretty generic, but it may not apply to you. It may not work for your process. Um, you know, just grain of salt. It doesn't have to be anything you have to take to heart. I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not good at articulating my own thoughts. I, I find when I'm working in the end, like all my creative decisions are just sort of kind of intuitive and I just kind of go with the gut feeling in the end. I kind of rationalize it after, you know, but yeah. So, you know, that's that. Um, let me see. So I got some, get a couple of things. I guess I'll just try to talk a little bit about just factors that I find personally important when it comes to designing, um, whether it be a character or, you know, uh, an object, weapon, environment, or just an illustration, it's just designing a 2D image. Um, so uh, yeah, let me see, let's pull this guy up. So let's see, all right, cool. So um, yeah, I, I find, <clears throat> mm, I think everything, for me, it's just, it kind of distills down to uh, some form of juxtaposition, I guess, just how things, um, how things are in relation to each other. That's all the elements of design, you know, when it comes to like color, line, value, all that kind of stuff. So I, that's, you know, too long, didn't read, that's basic skin version of it. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a little bit about color here. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you guys have all seen this on like Twitter or something. It's just the idea that, you know, you can see this image right here. There's literally no red pixels on this. You can tell it's red strawberries just because the cyan skews to white and your eyes sort of perceptually make that sort of uh, adjustment. Uh, you can sort of infer and uh, deduce that it's like a red color. Um, a lot of that is just sort of based on, what was it? Delacroix, I think, it was like a painter. He said like, you know, oh, I can paint the skin of Venus or something. If you give me mud, just the idea that like, um, you can take any color, you can surround it with any other color to create uh, perceptually whatever you feel. It could be like saturated, it can be grays. Um, it could be really subtle. So for example, if you look at this Sargent painting over here, all these, you know, I just kind of color picked a bunch. Um, they're all within the same, range, you know, uh, of hue, you know, it's just like oranges, reds, yellows type of thing, but it's just slight changes in saturation, which really change the color temperature of the area. So, you know, you get a lot more reds, you get that band right over here. 
uh, when there was nose, cheeks, ears, that sort of thing. Uh, the forehead would be a little bit more yellow. Any sort of like, you know, the more stubbly sort of areas, it becomes more gray, more desaturated. Um, or on the other hand, I guess if you go, you can also go uh, uh, fairly varied in hue and go um, desaturated on the whole piece itself. And there you'll still see. Um, yeah, and there you can still see uh, sort of uh, a unified image. Um, it's kind of interesting to see when you sort of pick up the hues and then boost up the saturation to see, you know, even from here to here, um, the hues are completely different. But when you saturate it down to its close values, um, you'll get that little bit of, of um, uh, I don't know if you'd call it like a vibration, but it's uh, just that change in hue, which kind of gives it uh, a certain feeling. I don't know. Um, of course, you can just ignore all that and not be subtle and just kind of go crazy, you know, like this Amano piece over here. Um, they all have different effects, you know, they all have different uh, feelings to what they do. And it's just something you need to be mindful of. It's just every color is really defined by what surrounds it. I think that's a big part of it. Um, <clears throat> what's another, another thing? Lines. Um, so in animation school, they taught us a lot about like, oh, you gotta have straights versus curves, you know? Um, you see like any, any sort of like bulbous section, you know, it's like the musculature uh, is sort of defined by like the bulbous forms and like the more bone areas would be defined by straights. Um, this applies to things like uh, your posing. Uh, when you have something where you, you want a gesture to show like a lot of tension or anticipation for something. Um, Sometimes it can really help sort of just like refine a gesture and really get like distill it down to the simple sort of basic forms. Um, or, you know, you don't have to do a straights and curves type of thing. Sometimes it could be all curves, all straights. Uh, it really depends on what you're going for. And, you know, in Adventure Time, just like nothing straight here. It's just a bulbous mass, you know. Um, or like, uh, I guess, in Kira, where he's just bloated. He's kind of like a cancerous growth type of thing. Um, so in terms of like the composition, um, I find, this is, where's this book? I got this. This is one book, I mean, it's way better than me. This book called Framed, Framed Ink, Drawing and Composition. Oh, is it showing on the, I can't see my webcam. Oh yeah, I can, I can link that. Yeah. But this guy, like, um, I can't even. Marcos Matum Nestor, I don't know. He's, he worked on like, you know, Prince of Egypt, Asterix and stuff like that. But this book, just on like drawing, composition, it's, it's super, he's got illustrations for all this stuff. It's super, you know, it's super thorough. It's, you know, all this kind of stuff, way better than me. So um, if there's one thing to look out for, for that type of stuff, I think that would be a very good one, um, especially when it comes to uh, narrative. Um, he talks about things like, Using a wide lens, uh, you know, long lens. What is that going to be like? Uh, the use of negative space, just sort of the psychology of you know, uh, the shapes, the framing, um, yeah, all this type of stuff. Super cool. Uh, I would say, check that out. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just uh, you know, it's just basic stuff. Just uh, curves. They tend to like you know draw you in. They're a little more relaxed. Uh, when you have straight lines, they tend to be more dynamic. Um, they kind of uh, they can sort of put a stop to things, or they can sort of um, create something more aggressive. Um, sometimes they can give a you know if it's straight up and down, it can give you. A, oh yeah, you found the thing. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly the book. Um, you know, it can can lead you in. Um, I think that's a big part of what the lines do when you look at something so organic, like this terratic piece over here, and there's, it's all just curves and your eyes just kind of falls all the way around. Um, I think that's something you want to keep in mind at all times. Um, leaving sort of a certain amount of space as well. Let's see. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so you're from an animation background? Is, what's that? You went to an animation school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like back 2004, they just started doing um, a sort of like 
bachelor's program type of thing. So it just added a bit of 3D, but it was mostly, you know, paper, pencil, that type of thing. So you have to like flip it yeah. and you know, draw all that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I never, just from your work, I wouldn't really think about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I never said I was good at it, right? That's, that's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> I had, um, yeah, I had a, a cousin who worked at Pixar. Um, well, still works at Pixar. But uh, when I was in high school and I didn't really, you know, know what I wanted to do, just kind of a bored kid, no real direction in life. Um, but, you know, I doodled and drew a lot. And I think her suggestion was just like, yeah, like, why don't you just go to the school, try it out, do what I do. Nice. You know, you seem to like it. Tried it. Um, kind of liked it. Like, yeah, like, I don't want to be an animator. It's just so much work. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah. way too much. Uh, I mean, a lot like of I, yeah, I don't know. This well, amount of effort it Three D now, all the animations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, by the time we graduated, it was all pretty much like all CG type stuff. Or you know, want to go to Japan? That's a little tough, I guess, especially money wise and, and things like that. But um, yeah. I mean, they they taught a lot of like everything I'm showing here is just kind of like an animation school thing, to be honest. Um, all the principles really tend to apply, you know, so. Uh, I guess there is a one, one question, a couple questions. Uh, oh yeah, did I miss? I'm, I, I can, I mean, I can say it too, but, or you can look at the chat. Yeah, uh, what was this, in, uh, from Jose? Uh, Evany, too. It says, what, what oh. he said the most important carryovers he learned from animation to his current um, work. Hmm. I don't know if it's a specific thing. Um, for sure, it was like, there's like very specific things like life drawing, I guess, right? That's just like uh, learn anatomy, learn, you know, skeleton, learn, you know, the origin, the insertion of the muscles so you can understand like just how the body articulates to a certain way. Um, I mean, like stuff like for concept art that I ended up doing, like the painting stuff, we didn't get a whole lot of, um, yeah, we didn't, we didn't get a whole lot of uh, practice. Um, it was okay. I, like they made us do gouache and, and things like that, which was horrible. I didn't know how to use it. Um, yeah, was there another? Uh, it's about the same question, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like a little bit of everything. Um, it's like all art, right? They all kind of apply to a certain degree. It's right. just kind of what you choose to take with you. That's all. Um, yeah, oh, uh, so next thing I'm showing is just uh, just grouping your tonal values together. Um, often you'll, you'll see somebody if they're not, if it's not a well planned out piece or, or anything, like you, you'll see your values are sort of all over the place and it becomes kind of unreadable, you know, it becomes a bit of a mess. I think if you look at these images over here, I mean, they're pretty obvious, I guess, but you know, you, you kind of break it down to its sort of distilled three, Midtones, highlights, shadows, that type of thing. Like you, you form very distinct groups, you know, very clear shapes. Like that middle one, like it was all noise, right? But then if you kind of break it down, it's really just like kind of a middle gray and then <laughs> a circle in the middle, more or less. Um, things to keep in mind, I guess, as you're doing a painting. Um, or really, uh, even when you're designing, uh, you know, a character or a weapon, right? You, you need to have a certain amount of flow and break up within the design even of like, you know, character, an object, things like that. Um, one thing that I love is just sort of uh, having uh, a very limited sort of tonal range. Um, I, I, you'll notice like just, I don't know, like in life, you, you never really see things that are pure black, pure white. Um, and I, I really love it when you see just sort of in paintings, um, you just have a really narrow range. It's like mostly mid-tones, a little bit of, you know, shadows and highlights and and the range is just sort of pretty compressed um yeah i mean you see here there's just like not a single white pixel in this whole image you know it's all just sort of grays um yeah i don't know it's just a thing i like um oh lost edges there's like a blog post um i think gregory manchez wrote somewhere on like muddy colors or something and he, he just breaks this down pretty completely, just like when to use it, when, you know, 
um, the effects of it, like how it works. Um, this, this painting that he did right here, um, you can just sort of see like there's just so many, just, just so many like lost sort of edges internally and just sort of grouping of the tones together. Um, one thing it does is just sort of, uh, oh man, you guys are fast. Yeah, that's, that's literally, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, let's go read that. But it's, it, it's a good read, like it really helps you sort of um, just kind of control where the eyes are going. Um, sometimes you can do it, like if you choose not to do any of that and it's all pure hard edges, all that kind of stuff, you have to rely more on lines, the, the grouping of the tones, the shapes and things like that to sort of control the viewer's eye and kind of lead it around. Um, but if you're doing something a little more impressionistic, this is something you can do where you can just kind of control um, a little bit. You can break down more complex forms into something more digestible. Um, your eye doesn't get too fatigued, you know. You can move from one area of like high contrast and then you'll kind of like skim over this a little bit. You understand it's impressionistic. Your eyes will fill in the rest of the details. You can go into the next pool of detail. Um, yeah, that's uh, something that's really useful for illustration in general. Uh, other examples right here, just sort of grouping all your <clears throat> midtones together where you can barely make up the edges. Um, you look at any of sort of Alex Konevsky stuff, you just get a lot of stuff, um, which is, I don't know, super cool. It's great in general. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, same goes with sort of any, any of his synthesis piece, which is just like pure atmospheric, all that kind of stuff. Or um, if you look at any sort of golden age illustrator, I think they're really good at this whole whole thing, uh, everything that I was talking about with like the tonal range, uh, the grouping together, just, they're always super clear. So anyone like, I don't know, Dean Cornwell or uh, Bernie Fuchs, or uh, I don't even know, there's Edwin Dickinson maybe. Um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, illustrators from that era who are, very good at sort of breaking down in very clear forms, just all the elements in an illustration. All right. Oh, I saw. <laughs> uh, what was this? So talking about. This is. Oh yeah, this is just like materials and stuff. Oh, so when it, when you're designing stuff in in games just or you know movies games whatever um i think it's just kind of important to pay attention to the materials of an object um often something uh that we do in destiny is that we'll um we'll try to find uh interesting juxtaposition between something that is sort of sci-fi futuristic and something that is sort of old and fantasy type of thing like a little bit of uh uh, like a little bit like, um, I don't know, something like a Star Wars thing. There's always something like, you know, lightsaber, something futuristic, but it's in the shape of a sword, something like that. Um, and often one of the ways we try to do that is uh, in the materials of, of the objects. So you look at something like, um, I don't know, just a collaboration, the uh, fashion designer Craig Green um, and Adidas, you know, just taking these materials and these are just the same materials from a shoe and just creating like a sculpture out of it is just kind of a good exercise, I guess. It's a good way of thinking of just how can I use materials in a way that are different um, and I guess novel. Um, yeah, and I guess just sort of looking at and understanding the variety of materials in general, you know, what's the difference between, you know, cotton, linen, you know, corduroy, uh, all that kind of stuff. Do you think uh, working in FPS games, there's more emphasis on materials because of how close you can get to oh, something? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, when it comes to FPS though, it's, you know, usually just like your hand and a gun. So you're, you are stuck mostly with, you know, hard surface materials, you know, um, you do get like cloth wrapped guns all the time, but yeah. I mean, I was thinking more in, in terms of like just character costuming, things like that. Um, but yeah, um, it's just sort of, I don't know, just uh, you, you got to look a little bit further sometimes to find interesting materials, interesting sort of surface treatments on things that are not just as road as they you know, steel or, you know, whatever, I guess. Yeah. Kind of depends. Um, 
yeah, let me see. Uh, oh, one thing, I guess. So <clears throat> I would, I think an important thing, you don't have to be like, you know, an engineer or anything like that, but it's, I think it's always important to try to understand sort of the construction, you know, of whatever. It just kind of goes hand in hand with the materials talk as well. It's just, uh, um, it, it goes with anatomy, like understanding how the human body moves, um, what it looks like when, you know, like the arms are stretched out, when it's compressed, you know, in different angles, different poses. Um, you can sort of figure that out. If you understand like the human anatomy very well, this is something you can kind of transpose onto other things, you know. Um, for example, this robot arm that I worked on um, back in the day. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know anything about sci-fi stuff. Um, but, you know, it looked up like, oh, what'd be cool advanced material thing. So there are things like uh, artificial sort of muscles, like these, uh, it's like electric polymer type of thing. You take an electric discharge, it can compress, things like that. Um, that combined with sort of, um, you know, just human anatomy, you can sort of, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but it, it, it can kind of like approximate it. Um, it just gives it that level of plausibility. Um, there's... I mean, I think in games, you can kind of get away with a lot more just because you can, you know, cheat certain things or, you know, it doesn't have to work exactly right, which is good. You don't, you don't want to be exactly, you know, making, making a one-to-one, -one. but I think that's something that's uh, pretty important to do. Um, good thing is just sort of, I mean, even on the design side, if you see, if you can understand sort of like, oh, uh, what are the underlying, um, I guess functions for certain things like I'm, I'm looking at this like diagram of the space shuttle thing. These are like little thermal jets, oxygen tank, just these sort of things. Um, <clears throat> knowing the function and the purpose of what they do uh, can really inform your design, and you can do a lot of the heavy lifting of what you're doing. You know, there's there's probably a reason why they would use scaffolding in a certain section. Why would they have plates a certain way? Why things are arranged in a certain array or what angle they're sort of set at? Um, sometimes it's just because of, you know, um, a material, um, it's not able to create certain compound forms. Maybe it's something like, um, heat dispersion or, you know, who knows? Um, I think it's just something it's always good to be aware of, um, in a game, you know, you end up just kind of doing whatever feels good to an art director in the end, but there's that layer, layer in level of plausibility, I think that really helps. Uh, what else is there? I think it was pretty much it in terms of what I was looking at. I mean, those, those are sort of the big things for me uh, when it comes to designing something um, and just like an image in general. Um, trying to think of what else. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of images for to demonstrate, but I think I actually I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what sort of the makeup of the workshop is. Like, do most people want to work in games? I assume, or it's a it's a pretty much mix, especially since uh, yeah. this is online. So yeah. it's just everyone from everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't want to be too specific, I guess. Um, yeah, well, okay, well, say you're working in games, whatever. I, I think one thing that's just like a, just general things, like when it comes to like researching, referencing things, like I think it's always good to just go beyond what's directly related to your subject, you know? Um, well, oh, first of all, research and use a lot of references. I think that will really support your design to begin with. Uh, just, you know, give it some good bones. Um, but yeah, like I, I think, try to take it, you know, like if it's something sci-fi, just don't use like 45 degree angles and hexagons all day. Like there's, there's more to it than that. You can kind of look beyond. Um, there's, hmm. I mean, you can find good design references and everyday objects. You know, if you look at any, anything designed by like, you know, Dieter Rams, Rams, that type of thing, like you'll, you'll get just good fundamentals that you can apply to anything else, you know? You look at like a good pair of, I don't know, Nike sneakers, you know, you can get, you can see sort of the material breakups, um, how they layer, um, 
certain materials in the forms, even though they're not necessarily functional, I think you can inform a lot of what you can do. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and I think it's just good to have something that's, I don't know if it's important, but I think personally, it's, it's always good to have something that you're pretty passionate about personally. Um, like I, I really like sort of the occult, I guess, um, like just that sort of, it's like very kind of like dark sort of, uh, stuff. Like I have, let me see, I pull up some images and stuff like, you know, like, I don't know, Wayne Barlow or something, or there's, there's all these sort of like old images that I love that it's just like a mood and, um, it may not directly apply to anything that I do, you know, especially right now, I'm just working on sci-fi stuff right now, but there's, there's little things that you can use to like insert into it and, and that kind of pushes it a little bit further, takes a little above and beyond. Um, yeah, that was really awesome. Um, yeah, it's, and sometimes it's just like things that are not uh, literal. It's just sort of a, a mood feeling that you're trying to convey. Um, I think that's actually really important as well. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, I got random stuff here. Oh, big Sinsky over here. But um, yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, that's that's pretty much my thought process in general. Uh, in generalized form, anyway. Um, I can't think of anything too. I mean, I'll try to answer any questions if anyone has specific things and i'll just like go straight into a demo you know yeah i, I guess we can answer that. a couple of questions right now and oh, then yeah. we can start the demo and then uh yeah 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 take a break in between the demo sure. too. so one of the question is uh what do you think the most valuable specific skill set is to cultivate in regards to bringing value to the pipeline at a game studio and getting hired at the start of your career specific skill um, as a concept artist? Uh, yeah, concept artist. Uh, like environments, characters, props, you know, just give one example, maybe like if you're doing characters. Oh, just straight. Well, okay. So, <clears throat> I mean, I suck at environments. I can barely do anything. At, at most I can do like, you know, doorways or you know like a specific I can do like an elevation or something but like I'm just so bad at doing like actual environments um if it's like a skill like hmm. you know I I used to I would I would say like you know foundational drawing skills right like just your draftsmanship should be good um your job is just to be a communicator right you know um visually or if you're really good with the words I guess you can communicated with words um but you know whatever tools you have to communicate that as clearly as possible you know um if you're good at drawing you know if you can really spell out the details properly um then i think that's important now of course there's a lot of concept artists who use 3d nowadays and i think that is a big boon so if you're talking like a specific skill i think it really does depend um at bungie i think everyone but me is proficient in 3D in the concept department. Um, and it really helps. It's, it's, uh, it really helps the pipeline as well. Like when you send things to outsourcing or, you know, or even internally, when you give them a model of what, like what you worked on, what you used to block it out, um, it could save a huge amount of time. Um, a lot of revisions, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think that would be a big one. That's not to say that you have to do it because, you know, yeah, I agree with that. Just having the solid foundation first is like, yeah, that's the first thing you need. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not as tangible, but just in my mind, it's, it's not really about like, of course it's good. It's important to be able to draw well and to do all that, but I'm always more interested in, you know, just, you know, like what's in your mind? Like, what are you thinking about? Like what ideas are you bringing to the table? Right. It's sort of like what new thing you can bring to, you know, a property. Yeah. I think it just like, it's hard for like a beginner to yeah. put that image on paper if their skills isn't as refined. No, exactly. It's like, if you don't have the vocabulary 
to sort of show it off, then it becomes a problem, right? Like that's sort of the first step. Um, whatever tool set is, right? That could be, you know, trying. Uh, would you want to take another question before you do a demo? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, uh, there's a bunch. I can just give you one. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, uh, do you approach your work differently when working on projects for a team versus personal projects, or do you go tend to go through images the same way? Oh yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, um, let's see. I mean, I'm not consistent on anything, um, personal or work wise, but. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, you, you got to do the whole typical thing, you know, you like, you do some thumbnails, rough sketches, and, you know, you take it to a certain stage, you, you send it over to get some feedback, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, with personal stuff, I'm, I'm just jumping straight in and just kind of scribbling around. Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what this demo is going to be. Just a lot of, a lot of me just throwing out, like, everything I just told you guys about, pretty much. <laughs> and we'll, we'll see how that goes, because that's, yeah, I don't know. Um, personal work is just sort of for me to explore um, without really, uh, I guess, being too deliberate. I think I, I enjoy that, I guess. Um, for work, it's definitely much more, yeah, it's much more segmented. You know, you, you do things in stages. Um, yeah, even just that robotic arm thing I saw from uh, yeah. Lone Echo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, I've, I've never seen you do a technical drawing like that before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was very yeah, that was like my first robot, man. I just I was not, yeah, I'm not good at any of that kind of crap. But yeah, like I, I it's good to me. Yeah, I I don't know who if anyone like follows me or anything. Like I don't know what they know me for, but I don't feel like a lot of them know from my concept art. I guess <laughs> just kind of a weird thing. Hmm. So. Yeah, I think mostly illustrations is. Like, yeah, I mean, and that's just like whatever I do in my free time, uh, to be honest most of my actual life and work is just designing stuff um, yeah. for games. So yeah, definitely very different. Um, hope that uh, answers a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. It, uh, Reagan says it did. <laughs> yeah. Cool. 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 Uh, yeah. Should I just start scribbling around or something? Uh, yeah. It, you can just do the demo now and then uh, I'll ask you questions that people have been asking every once in a while. Sure, yeah. Just to break up. And then if you want to listen to music, you can like share it through the. Oh, yeah. Now I got. Now it's like a new. I got like nothing on this thing anyway. Okay, cool. Yeah. If you got music, you can play it. I don't know. Um, no, I think. Oh, I can't. Okay. It, it's fine. We can just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, does anyone like, do people have a preference on, you know, what type of demo? Uh, I know some people like sort of like the line art stuff that I do. Um, I was planning originally just to like do some, you know, pen on paper type of stuff, which I thought would be kind of fun, but I think it's a lot harder to do now. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. So uh, I guess I can go, I can ask the class uh, lines or painting, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can, I don't know if I can do a bit of both. That's kind of weird. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot I can do a poll here, but. You can pull it? <laughs> I can, but. <laughs> I mean, I can, how much time do we have? Like I can probably do both right just do like an hour each or something i would, I would just do what, whatever you're comfortable with it is, we don't have that much time to do a demo so okay you know, whatever you're comfortable with uh, um i mean I think I there's a lot actually it's like 50 50 right now <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah uh someone asked is it a separate process like you don't i mean a little bit i mean let me see it's kind of separate. I, I can show like just real quick and cra like if you guys aren't expecting anything great because I hope you yeah. don't. It's not gonna. Yeah, be, like quick. I don't perform well under pressure. <laughs> quick lines um, is fine, and you can move. Yeah, on. I, I'll just like show as it. Uh, okay. I'll, actually, I can. I can. Uh, I'll grab a file actually. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. Show you, like the layers, and then I can like do a quick demo of that or, or something stupid maybe. Let me see. This one. Okay, whatever. Here. Let me open this crap up. All right, look at all these stupid layers here. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's broken up pretty okay. Let me see. Oh man. Yeah, it's a freaking mess. Okay, so um, publish. So 
I guess I'd start off with, like, yeah, okay. So I usually have like, you know, real quick scribbly line. I just want like a gesture, some shapes, something that I enjoy, you know, um, like, oh, I, I get kind of a feeling of what I'm going for here. Um, sometimes, not always, I'll, uh, you know, put some lines on top and I'll just like literally fill it in, like throw in some, some texture of some sort, just like real scribbly, just block in some forms. Um, these won't be in order, obviously. I don't know exactly what's going on here. Uh, but, you know, I'll just start building things up, just sort of like uh, how I want things to be broken up a little bit. Um, I'll be adjusting things here. So it's just like maybe an occlusion kind of crap. It's real rough. And then I think at this point, I flattened it um, when I remember, it looks like. Then I would have this, I guess. And from here, there's just like a whole bunch of, you know, things I just, just building up on top, you know. Um, I would, yeah, I would just like add layers to something, just kind of like flatten it down, um, bring out certain parts, shadow out some part, other parts. Um, uh, so that's a good question. Uh, yeah. Hey, Toby, I know you collab with Jing Na a lot. Yep. And it looks like some of that texture is photo based. Do you end up throwing her work in your mother lamb chronicle illustration? Yeah, yeah, we used to, um, I don't know what this one's Grace Fong. Specifically. Um, but yeah, we did, for, I don't know if I used that much textures, but definitely like, I remember like all the gold kind of stuff that uh, I used to put on everything. That was literally, um, it was like from one of her photo shoots, you know, we just grabbed, uh, it was like we stuck some flowers into like this sort of cardboard thing and painted it gold so it wouldn't show up on the, on the background type of thing. And then I just like, after you took it, I just like took a picture of it, like, you know, scanned it, threw it into Photoshop type of thing and kind of messed with it a bit. And then I just started using it like all the time. Um, some, yeah, I don't think we use a lot of her actual photos, photos, um, just because, you know, they're mostly figurative and I don't know, seems a little, it's not usually a suitable for what I'm looking for. Like I, I'm usually just looking for something that's a little, noisy you know um i what i end up doing just to get a little bit that sort of like analog feel i'll you know i i thumbnail in a sketchbook i'll just scan that in and just kind of paint right on top so there's a lot of grain and messiness that kind of pulls through um you know any anything that's sort of like pulled out from the scan of it or the photo you know i'll just kind of keep or i'll kind of mess around with that a little bit yeah that definitely helps i think um yeah, i don't know what else is there yeah i don't know if that helps just showing the layers of that kind of stuff but um yeah that was cool let me see yeah i mean that's yeah i don't know that's pretty much it for the painting i can do like a quick like i'll just show what i would do on actual pen and paper type of thing with like all the line art stuff that uh, some people seem to like, I guess. Um, so yeah, you know, like I'll just, you know, I'll go in with pencil and I'll just like really just, it's, it's super abstract, it's super rough, but you know, I'll draw, in, uh, I'll just draw in like a shape, just lightly, just things that I kind of want to, whatever I find kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I don't, what am I gonna do? Okay, whatever, I'll just, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Pretend I did this all in pencil and, you know, I erased it or scribbled it around or something and, you know, but like, I, I'll look for like a big shape, uh, big gesture type of thing. And, you know, I'll, um, I'll have these areas in my mind of just like, oh, I'll want like pools of detail, whatever that is. And what the actual detailing is kind of doesn't really matter. You know, like you're just kind of going for specific things. You just want areas of rest, you know, areas of detail. You just kind of do like a little thing here. Um, and just, you know, just pretty abstract. I'm not thinking super uh, formally, you know, it's really just sort of shape based. Um, so yeah, like, since it's kind of personal stuff, I really just go with like whatever feels good, just sort of like my muscle memory. So they all end up looking kind of the same, unfortunately. That's just, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, you know, Something like that. Let's say that it's, it's rough in. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in with like a pen, I guess. Pretend pen, anyway. Um, 
Let me see. Get that in to yeah, sure. All right, yeah, so then I'll just kind of go in and um, you know, I'll just start sort of filling in. Um, Yeah, I try not to be too detailed, I guess, when going into it. Uh, these are super mess. Uh, it's a pen. I'm like, I can't erase. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. I'll just draw it in. Uh, like, usually you're drawing this with like a tiny pen. and Yeah, I got like a, it's like a Muji pen. It's yeah, just like yeah. a point three or whatever. Um, okay. So, oh yeah, it actually is kind of, okay, whatever. So yeah, you know, I'll just go it in and I'll just start to like, you know, do whatever. It's obviously going to be better hopefully anyway and a little slower like I'm just sort of I don't know it's pretty zen if I'm being honest um, you know, I'm just kind of going in filling in shapes whatever feels kind of good to me at the time um, all those things I'm talking about when, when it comes to like you know the juxtaposition of certain elements together um, like in my mind I get it, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like, yeah, I understand like how things are supposed to be, but like really in the end, it's, I just, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of go with whatever feels kind of right, I guess. So, you know, whatever, it's a face, I guess now. Oh boy, this is a bad drawing. So yeah, um, just kind of this kind of thing. I'll just go in, uh, you might have some, Hair or something, you know, right here. You can just kind of go around. Oh, this face is bad. So you just kind of go around and just kind of, on whatever shapes you kind of feel like, you're getting kind of like higher frequency details, which you pull around next to sort of like wide spaces. You just kind of go around like that. Um, yeah. And a lot of, I don't know, like a lot of, I really like sort of just organic curved forms. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just sort of a, kind of a muscle memory thing. Um, you know, just break it up maybe, I don't know. I think someone asked, are you, do you like to sketch on Cintiq or in tools? Do I like to? Uh, which um, one do you prefer, I guess? I actually just started kind of messing around with an Intuos recently just because, um, I don't know, I was bored, I guess. Um, I was very used to a Cintiq, um, especially when it comes to sort of doing like line art things, you know. Um, but there's, there is something kind of nice about using an Intuos where you're further away from the screen from canvas. And um, yeah, you just sort of, this is a different mindset, I think. Just like just the the fact that like you you move a little less, like you move your muscles less for uh, less one to one movement when you're painting. And I find I can make like maybe sometimes you can make like broader gestures um, working in an into us. Yeah. But then I try to draw something and it's just <laughs> it like crap. I mean, no not worries. that it even looks <laughs> that much better on a Cintiq. Like my draftsmanship yeah. is super, you know, rough and and shaky. So. No, it's always like at three for three. Uh every all the artists so yeah. like 11 artists except one draws on the uh, in tools wait for real yeah Is it you use 3d no we're there's more 3d now but just for some reason everyone just likes the in tools and only one person uses this in yeah most of the people at bungee use uh a cintiq or not uh in tools too which is really crazy. yeah um crazy. like <laughs> yeah, one of my buddies, he uh, he literally just like traded it. He was like, yeah, I'm just gonna go full into us now. Like, I, just, I just don't get why all these companies like bungee. I mean, I mean, there's always something nice about sort of like paring it down, I guess. You know, there's, I don't know, there's, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, kind of like Mary condoing it, right? You're like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't need this kind of thing or yeah. whatever. And I, I definitely get that. Like, I just kind of got a new Cintiq, so I, I like, I kind of want to mess with it more. But, you know, for a while I was just doing uh, an Intuos, just was like, oh, my table's small. And I don't want to stare at a screen all day when I get home after I, you know, after I'm working, staring yeah. at a screen all day. So, you know, there's a little bit of that for sure. But yeah, I don't know. 
I mean, I wouldn't say do one or the other, you know what I mean? Just do, do whatever feels good for you. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, some people just like love it though. Like you give them a Cintiq, they'll just turn it into an Intuos type of thing. Like they'll just turn it into a <laughs> tablet. Like they just don't want to draw on it. So, which, you know, I get. Uh, yeah. So this drawing is crap, but hopefully people understand just sort of the thought process here. Like I'm, and it's just like you're filling in forms, just kind of getting the shapes in. Do you want something sort of higher density, lower density, you know, something like that. And uh, you know, it takes a little bit longer. You should be a little more. If you were to uh, draw this traditionally on pen and paper, how long does yeah. it usually for you to do a drawing like that? Uh, I mean, it kind of depends, I guess. It's just sort of uh, like if it's like a small one. I used to do like like pretty small ones type of thing. That would take like an hour because there's only so much you can actually do, right? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't like it doesn't scale up linearly. Like the bigger I get, like it takes way longer because I don't even know what to do with all this blank space, and it gets like. Yeah, it gets a little daunting for me. So, like, I'm actually only comfortable with like small to medium size type of thing. Um, like, you've seen like I don't know, like Tarada or somewhere right? when he's drawing like those giant murals. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could like I I want to do that sometime, like just to try it out. But I think it would take me like a year just because I can't. Like, I'd be too afraid to make a mark on on a wall type of thing. I don't know. Something about the size of it that seems daunting, but. I really want to do it, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe one day I'll just like draw on the wall. Yeah, hey you can uh, come to the school and draw on the wall. For real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I can just paint it over if we need to. Yeah, I was just gonna say like <laughs> if you have paint, then you know, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll guinea pig that. That's no problem. Yeah, that'd be fun. I don't know. Yeah, I have a huge like piece of white wall in the back. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, Dude, I, I totally. I actually brought that up with um, I think. Uh, my parents one time they're like you have like can i just draw on this wall like you guys aren't using it <laughs> you're like yeah yeah for sure and then like a, like a couple of days you're like ah no 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 don't touch it they're yeah like, there's no way they'll let you do that <laughs> they're not really yeah <laughs> they don't love me that much it's a whole different thing i mean they ended up putting they just put like another tv there or something so yeah. whatever yeah um hmm yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know. I'm bad at like talking and drawing at the same time. Uh, what am I? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I, like, I, I think, don't. Hmm. I think what you're doing right now is fine. Like, yeah, the paint is good and we're talking and stuff. So yeah, it looks good. The drawing actually looks pretty good to me. <laughs> it doesn't hold up. Let me just zoom out a little more. It'll look better. Actually, it's, yeah, it's a weird thing where I think at work, I find like when I'm working on Cintiq, I, I'm working. Yeah, you know, about this small most of the time. Um, just because it just, I don't know, like you zoom in all the time and then you, you start finding yourself getting lost into things that are kind of unnecessary yeah. until, it, you know, until you need to sort of like spell things out later on. But yeah, I don't know. That's just, it's like a weird thing. Just keep drawing small things all the time. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I don't know what else. Yeah, does anyone have like any other specific questions? I don't feel like I've given like a real. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of questions. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer as much as I can because like I just, I'm not good at articulating. Um, I, Ivan asks, uh, how, do you, how do you go about finding the images that inspire you? How do like, I go about? Google, Pinterest, books, etc. Oh yeah, um, I definitely like, yeah, I, um, books are harder though. You can't just like, chance upon it as easily like the internet is so perfect for this kind of stuff um for a long time it would just be like i haven't used pinterest yet um uh, but definitely it was like tumblr or something or you know if you find if you follow enough of the you know the right people on you know twitter or something um uh, you'll, they'll they'll just keep like they'll retweet a whole bunch of stuff or like just there's, there's a lot of things it's just the internet in general like i don't know how to find something specific but i think it's just more a question of casting your net pretty wide like always looking um through all sort of channels um 
Instagram is a good place to find artists, I guess. But if you're looking for like inspiration, like from artists who, you know, are not alive, um, you know, you find, if you find someone you like, you know, um, like uh, Gustav Klimt or something, he's part of the symbolist movement. So you start looking up other, you know, other artists within that movement to see if they have something of a similar tone, similar feeling to what you get, and you can kind of move on from there. Um, I think that's a big thing. Um, but yeah, um, uh, nothing to specific. Uh, it's pretty organic in yeah. the end. Like you just find what you find, right? Guess, uh, here's another question. Uh, this yes, short one. Uh, does a portfolio have to be purely technical and skill based, or is there room for more personal expression? Oh, I mean, yeah, just, mm, I mean, the answer to like every question is going to be like, it depends, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, I think about, well, well, I guess I'd have to, I'd have to ask Bungie. I don't, I don't know what they thought of me and my portfolio. Uh, I got in somehow, so we'll see about that. But um, uh, personally, I don't think it necessarily has to be like, I'm, I think I mentioned this before, but like I'm definitely more interested in sort of like what's going on uh, internally. Um, but your technical skill does have to be up to a certain level. Like it just, it needs to be able to get across clearly, not just to like another artist. Like maybe if you're good at shorthand and sort of impressionistic work, but if, you know, someone who is not as, you know, um, hands-on uh, as an artist, like uh, say it's an art director without uh, as much of an art background or something. Like you have to be able to communicate things to someone less well-versed and still get the point across, you know, like there has to be that level of clarity. So um, is that what he means by technical? Or, you know, is he talking about something else? I, I think that's a pretty good answer already. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, every studio, every person, you know, has their own preference. Um, and, and I don't know what you would consider technical is if it's just sort of like, uh, like sort of like a line work type of thing, or, I mean, for sure, I don't think it's so much a problem nowadays, but, um, I remember a lot of people used to think working in concept art was just doing like marketing images, like illustrations all day. And that was just sort of, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's very much not, not what concept but, art. Is. Yeah, like you're just rotating things all the time, and it's not, you know. Yeah, but um, I think you know people understand a little bit more clearly nowadays, so it's not so much a problem. Um, yeah, uh, it kind of depends, though. Sometimes there is. I mean, doesn't like Brom work at like Blizzard or something, and he just does paintings that are inspirational? Like, there's room for things. I didn't like know that. that. I thought he was like retired or something. But. I, I don't, I don't know. Like, oh, not, not retired, but like not working at a studio. <laughs> sure. I didn't but know I'm, he was like, like, you know, it's just like open call. Like whenever, if he feels like walking in and doing a painting, you know, they'll let him in anytime. Oh yeah. It, that's like uh, that, right? in our industry when you've earned that, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They'll let you do whatever, basically. Like Jason yeah. Chan just works up here for Riot, you know? Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Um, oh, I mean, like, but like Jamie Jones, right? He's just oh, like, yeah. any time, yeah. man, like, just get in here and just paint it wherever you feel like. Um, yeah, but I know, I don't know, that's rare. I don't, I don't know many people who can actually do that. So what kind of stuff do you think I should paint? Just like, usual dark kind of crap. Um, do you take requests and like people do it or do you kind of just free flow it? I mean, if I take a request, it's probably still going to end up being kind of free flow, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, okay. Like Grace it. Fong says, Toby, draw a cat. Draw a cat. Fungus cat from Taylor. I mean, I can, I can draw a cat right now, I guess. I, I mean, it's up to you. What, whatever you want. I'm not going to paint just a cat, though. It's not yeah, going to be yeah, that yeah. interesting. Cool. Uh, I can draw a cat anyway. I don't even know, man. Have you seen um, what's it called Neko Jiro? It's like cat soup or something. 
It was like, uh, it used to be like a manga, and then they turned, they had a movie version up and stuff too. Uh, I love that thing. It's uh, like, I think I've super seen it. Surreal, and like really dark. I'll have to show you sometime. It's like, Cat suit. Let me look it up. Yeah, it's it gets kind of dark, you know. It's like kind of like black humor type of thing, whatever. But it's uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I if mean, you see the movie, like there's a it's like a feature film by the guy who did like Mind Games, like Saki <laughs> and it's like it's like it's pretty out there. It's fun. Like I just love the vibe of it. Yeah, this this looks crazy. Yeah, you're you seeing it. Yeah. There's like weird things where like you know you'll see, um, I think it's God. I think it's literally God, and he's just like doing magic tricks in like a circus and stuff, and he's like cutting people out, putting them back together. Just like I don't know, it's all these weird things. Uh, so I guess it's like a cat stuff type of thing. Um, Looks pretty film. Yes, the uh, break pretty much over then. I need to get back to work. So uh, there's a question from uh, Kathleen. Can you talk about your biggest artistic growth and opportunity milestones? Biggest artistic growth, opportunity, or milestone? Yeah, I guess uh, maybe like some job that really defined your career maybe or some art piece you did. Hmm. Not sure. I think doing like the, the whole like Motherland Chronicles thing, that sort of personal project I was doing with Jingna, I think that was kind of a big thing where I was just kind of doing just whatever I wanted um well because kind of like not like phoning it in at work but just kind of you know whatever. yeah that's I think that's what when you, when you started doing that that's when I was like whoa this this stuff is crazy who is this <laughs> like, right yeah and it was just like you know just once a week do something for yourself type of thing and it just kind of snowballed as we we're trying to like make it kind of cohesive and stuff like that um hmm. Yeah, maybe just because I actually did something for like, because usually I'll just do like one painting in one sitting or two or whatever. And it just, I kind of forget it, move on versus like trying to do a series of some sort. So I think that's kind of something. Hmm. Um, oh, and I, I, yeah, it probably, I don't know if it got me that many jobs, but I, one for sure does like this, <laughs> was this like J Rock band that just like really, do you want to use it for like your album cover type of thing? They had like very specific things that they liked about it. I was just like, oh, feel pretty validated. I thought it was pretty fun. Alrighty. Uh, more coffee. Um. Hmm. 
guess I'll paint something then. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Yeah. And I'll just ask you questions that people have been asking throughout. So. Sure. Oh, yeah, I see one. Uh, website host. Squarespace, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't really know how to do any website stuff, so. Um, hmm, okay. Oh, is my keyboard like super loud? Can you hear all that crap? I mean, I can hear a little bit, but it's not bad. I, I think okay. people are usually okay with just a little. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, like yeah. in my classes, <laughs> it's the same thing. I yeah. like look at the recording. I'm just like, holy shit! I press the space bar really loud. Yeah, I mean, I because we'll we have to do like all these video calls and stuff at work now, and sometimes I'm just like, doing like ah, and then people are like, what? You know? Yeah. It. It's also funny, like if I'm doing like a demo or a drawing, and I'm like, it's yeah. going pretty well, then yeah. I realize my keyboard clacking just gets louder. <laughs> <laughs> just like really getting into it. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, okay. Uh, what should I do? What should I do? What do people like? I guess I'll do like, uh, I don't know. Something with like a lot of arms or something, maybe. Kind of a Queen with three heads. Okay, fine. So yeah, if, uh, <laughs> if you guys really want to know my process, um, in real life, it would just be like two hours of me just like scrolling through, you know, Tumblr or Instagram or some crap, just being like, well, what should I do? And then like maybe an hour of just like scribbling something um, versus this where I just got to do something right now. Um, let's see. You do much, uh, you know, personal stuff nowadays. You like super busy. Uh, you know? Yeah, I still do it. I've been just drawing like, like some robot stuff. Uh, yeah. I've been doing some like environment paintings for uh, like this um, short like series, I guess. I always come yeah. with like these things, but I never finish them. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I don't know, it's stuff. Uh, I can't even like I don't even know how you do this, man. Imagine all the stuff you have to go through, except for the workshop, whatever. Yeah, I think starting the school definitely has hindered me in some ways and just doing yeah, more sure. art. So. 
no, no regrets, right? No, I think it's fun. And, you know, I, I still do it now, um, especially now it's the working from home thing. I just have more time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do you, do you feel like you're actually more efficient or less? So I definitely hear it both ways. I'm more efficient because, like, at work, I'm talking to people. I'm hanging out with people. You know, we play yeah, football, yeah, for sure. you know, all that but then, stuff. like, don't you ever feel held up by, like, when you're, like, emailing someone and you just got to wait for, like, a certain amount of, you know, I, I don't know. I still can't figure out if I'm doing better or worse. Oh, I mean, at work or at Yeah, home? yeah, yeah, work. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's weird. Work is, like, I think as long as you're just, if I do the work and I spend time on it, I, I know it should be good. Yeah. You know, like, it doesn't have to be a best. Like, I don't think I ever was, like, the best artist on a team. Oh, you sure. Know, but know. I've always done the work that's needed. So. I'm not even talking about, like, being the best. I just mean, like, in terms of, like, workflow, though, you know? Yeah. Because, like, like, do you guys have much, um, you know, do you guys have to have much feedback from like any stakeholders that kind of stuff, you know? oh yeah it's crazy i mean so i'm so not at three for three anymore though so oh, I, yeah. I left a couple weeks ago but right yeah because yeah, yeah. i'm going to riot but uh yeah, yeah there's Did you on board and everything yeah so nice. i'm in the valorant beta <laughs> i've been playing it it's pretty fun oh, yeah. do you like it how's it yeah it's, it's pretty fun it's uh it's like counter-strike kind of more counter-strike than overwatch pretty good i guess like i like counter-strike um yeah I don't know if I'll ever get back into it though, but it's interesting uh, decision that's being made. Are you doing that, or are you just doing some? Other yeah, I'm gonna be on that project, Valorant. That'd be kind of fun. And I'm gonna miss you again. Back to LA. I mean, I'll come back here. So the school will still be around, and then we'll have a workshop still. Yeah. So I'll probably fly in once. Oh yeah, yeah. You said you were gonna. Yeah. Drop yeah. In every now. And then Miso will be the one uh, to kind of manage the school and all the teachers too. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Arturo asked a question that says, it's a quick question. Uh, how much time do you take in between an illustration and another one? So like after you finish one, do you just do yeah, another one? Mm -hmm. It's definitely not like right away or something, unless I'm like super inspired. I don't know. That like never happens. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I've never actually thought about that. I see. Probably. I mean, I don't think I do like more than one a day, unless it's like work. It's personal. I'm just, you know, fetching out, doing my own thing. So yeah. Yeah. Like add, you know, at most, just like you know, data or something like that. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I didn't think about that so much. It is very hard to like work a full time job and then go home and do more work. Yeah, it's more like when do you actually start doing personal work? Period. Sometimes I just find myself in sort of like a bit of a drought, you know, I just. Yeah. Yeah. Although I have realized like, like at work, if I feel burnt out or anything, the yeah. best way to cure that is to do personal work. Yeah, that's the thing. Like the more unsatisfied I'm with work, then I'll be like way more into doing personal stuff. So yeah, I guess I'm happy, which is good and bad, right? So I don't know. And we'll see. I mean, after a while, I just get restless though. Um, it'll just be like a random thing. Like, last time I went on sort of a, yeah, I was trying to just bust out like acrylic paint, you know, just get my hands dirty on some actual painting crap. Um, it's like, usually it's whatever you're not doing at work. Something that's kind of the opposite. Of what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's my philosophy kind of. Yeah. Cause you know, like there's definitely, I'm not gonna be drawing Halo stuff or sci-fi <laughs> stuff when I get home like that's like Halo there's yeah, no yeah. way like <laughs> yeah I haven't done any uh, extracurricular destiny stuff I'm not sure that's gonna happen anytime too soon but... oh yeah I've always 
tell like people like you should do what you like you know like I, I feel like that pays off the most in that yeah I would encourage anyone to do their own thing as much as possible um I'll, I'll, you know there's reasons to do work stuff more and if you want to go above and beyond for who knows what reason uh, crunching all that crap if you want to get ahead maybe but um, I don't know personal growth I think it's always better to have a little more variety Plus, it's something that, like, it would feed back into your work in general, you know? Yeah. You don't often get a chance to get outside stuff uh, that you can sort of incorporate into your work, so. At uh, Bungie, do you go through a lot of, like, revisions on your work? Is there a lot um, of time more than, like, change those? Depends. Change that? Uh, uh, sometimes your time frame is pretty fast. Like you just don't have that much time for revisions, right? Like you just got to do it and go. Um, sometimes it does take a while just because there'll be a lot of like hanging questions. On it it's like any game studio, right? Where you're just like, not everything is figured out or whatever you're designing yet. So you're kind of in limbo for a little while or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Nothing crazy. It's pretty hard for course. So. Um, I would say they're, yeah. Kind of on the low end, though. I haven't gotten a lot of very specific, you know, change this one specific thing, like change the angle of this, or, you know, like that thing, it's, it's not too much of that. Yeah. It's a lot more, like, they understand what your intention is. They kind of leave a lot of the um, more minutia, specific details to you, which is, which is nice. Appreciate that. Wait, what was dream project? Dream project. Um, hmm. I don't know. Um, we might have talked about it a little bit already. It's just like doing something for yourself is kind of the dream, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was kind of. I don't know if it's a tricky project. I don't know. I remember when Steve went to from, we're both like looking into like, ah, oh, should we go work there or whatever? He actually went. Um, but I think working on, yeah, like Dark Souls or something would be fun, right? Obviously. It's just kind of my aesthetic, but yeah. there might be other, yeah, I don't know. Are you talking about Steve, Stephen Wen or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he still likes it. So it sounds good over there for him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I get this like weird, like he likes it, but then he's also doing a lot of work. So yeah, that's all I hear. <laughs> Did I tell you that story where he was like, I think he, he was he telling. Just, he okay. just got remote work like now. Wait, really? Yeah, like <laughs> from COVID nineteen, right? The yeah, virus? okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I don't know, I was not happy with that. Yeah, I remember but he I was telling me. Hmm? Uh, I was, I remember he was saying like. Yeah, man, like, you know, those stories you heard of, like, Japanese studios working crazy overtime, it's really not that bad right now, you know, we, front software made changes. He's saying at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. No, and then he was like, yeah, we don't work till 5 a.m. in the morning anymore. They cut it off at 12, 12 p.m. or 12 a.m., like, at night. And I was like, holy shit, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, four days, dude. And here I'm like, oh, man, I stayed, like, half an hour over by accident. I hate myself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, obviously a different standard. But I think he's relatively okay just because, you know. Uh, yeah, they pay like foreigners better. So if yes. you're not a Jap Japanese citizen. Yeah, they'll try to match your uh, your salary at least a little bit closer. It may not be 100%, but it's still like way better. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, which sucks. I don't know. Every time I think about like the state of like the entertainment industry in Japan is always you know, a little bit depressing. There's like animation studios, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, anim animation studios in Japan is tough. It's tough work. Like the best paying studios are still pretty low. It's just, yeah. I feel for them. Uh, 
I just ended up drawing again. I gotta, okay, I'll paint something. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. I, yeah, sometimes I'm super lazy with just, I'm gonna, just gonna magic tool this. I was wondering, uh, how do you get your pose? Um, is it just kind of like you put some scribble lines and you just decide on the pose based on what you oh, see? Yeah. Just, scribbled? just a bit of that. Like I might, like in my mind internally, I might think like, oh, I, I want a standing pose with a certain sort of gesture, right? Like, I mean, this is not, <laughs> this is pretty bad actually. Um, yeah, I mean, and as I'm like sort of drawing, uh, drawing it out, I'll definitely revise it just because, uh, Not sold on you know, the yeah. intention or idea behind it, but yeah, it's you know, it just it's just kind of like a flow thing. You just kind of look like, oh, I just kind of want like a certain this kind of shape or something, right? Just to like, right. And you just kind of do it, I guess. Um, yeah, I always really like how like you draw your hands too. They're like very. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're you know, they're definitely pretty sloppy right now, but. I mean, it's, it's fun to do, I guess. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, but like, I don't know, like, it's so tiny. And, you know, I don't know. This is so bad. Just smudge it or something. I don't even know. Uh, I guess I'll try to get like a basic sense of lighting or something. Um, always kind of love it when it's just like gradation from like, you know, top to bottom type of thing. It's like just a soft. All right, two eyes, here we go. Add six eyes, sure. Do you feel like you get like, you know, a pretty similar process every time you do like a drawing or, or a piece? Uh, I, I tend to like to explore more. So I have like a bunch of different ways I work. And yeah. Sometimes so I I'm like do. kind of discover right now. I'm like, this is not really how I do it, is it? I don't know. Just kind of. I mean, like, I have like certain ways, like I'll do a clean line drawing if I'm doing like hard surface stuff. And then, oh, yeah, uh, and then if I'm doing environment, I mostly paint it than using yeah. lines. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, and then sometimes I use 3D mock-up and I paint over it. So. And 3D just seems so annoying. <laughs> it's, so uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it, I don't think it's, like, if you're really good at drawing painting, you don't really need it. But it's, you know, it is easy, if, especially if you're working on, like, uh, working on, like, weapons and stuff or, you know, sure, vehicles. Yeah. It's just, it saves so much time. Yeah, but I I don't know. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, there's one thing, it's just like, you can be very exact with sort of like, uh... I think it's like, I don't think it's required, but it helps, right? Like, a lot of artists I work with, they don't use 3D either, and like, yeah. Sparth doesn't use 3D. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, a lot of people don't, and 
they're fine. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of it sort of depends on your dynamic with the rest of the team too. Sometimes your 3D artists are, you know, they actually like to do interpretations. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's actually my favorite to work with is I'll do a, oh, dude, me too. a concept that's not totally rendered out and I just give it to them. Yeah, and you know, they can fill in the details. Yeah, that. in a way, it's actually more fun for them too because they're yeah. not just copying it exactly, you know. I mean, that was one thing I guess I heard because I was, you know, I was asking around, you're like, yeah, like kind of, but like, I also like being able to, you know, figure it out myself and, you know, they want to add their own sort of nuances to it. You know? Yeah. I don't, they don't necessarily want you to do every fold. Um, yeah, exactly. That's like a little too hand -holdy. Yeah, it's getting to that, like, uh, you know, that, what's that, like that art director, the, oh, what yeah. is it called? The... You know, the yeah, one with like, like, the toilet, this well, toilet one, <laughs> one inch is yeah. getting to that territory. And yeah, yeah, I would never want to do that. It's just like, it's inefficient, right? Like, it's not a good use of my time or yours, usually. Uh, Lake asks, when people try to uh, direct you out of your aesthetic or creative choices, how do you s sell your signature choice to them? Um, I mean, it kind of depends. Um, what you have to sometimes you just have to like reframe it you know so if you're like i don't know like that's not a demon it's a goat or something like you just have to like sort of find a different way to frame it in a way that they can understand or, or more amenable to i feel like that's that's kind of a thing um sometimes you just can't so like they just they don't get like they don't agree with the the or like the baseline premise and that's just yeah and you can oh. only make so many, you know, uh, tries at it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of definitely case by case stuff. I also have people like, uh, I think it was like, I went to one of like Jamie's workshop and yeah. he was talking about how he got a job, right? Yeah. And the guy was like, hey, can you make your painting look like really finished? And Jamie's like, dude, that, that's not. Why don't you hire him? Yeah, it's like you look at my portfolio, it's kind of painterly and that's what you're gonna get, you know? So it's yeah. it's kinda of weird sometimes they, they want you to do something different. I mean that's that's so common, it's pretty much a trope, right? It's just like we love your style, we love this, can you just do it something else? And like, okay, well hire the wrong person. Yeah. I mean that's yeah, whatever you can't. Uh let's see, what should I do? That kind of thing, sorry. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, ever since I moved here, I kind of stopped using uh, all these like brushes and textures I used to have. And I've just been using like, you know, the default round brush to turn off like all the... Uh... Oh, wow, really? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, one is just like, I'm too lazy to like import brushes and crap all the time. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, whatever, I'll just get down to like basics or whatever. And I'll just like manipulate whatever I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll just make a texture out of my drawing right now. Yeah. I don't know. Who cares? Yeah, that's pretty smart. I don't know if it's smart, but, you know, it's just, I don't, don't want to think about it anymore sometimes. Uh, is there, like, any contemporary artists that you that inspire you nowadays or illustrators? Contemporary? Like, uh, yeah, whatever artists that you think are really good right now. Or Oh, uh, man, that's putting me on the spot. I mean, yes, the answer is definitely yes. There's a lot. Um, yeah, Josh Cow, obviously. No. I mean, my favorite, clearly. Um, but I mean, like, I, I really like looking just outside of games and, like, general entertainment, right? Like, I want to get more influence from, I don't know, fine art stuff. Like, even if I look at, like, you know, some weird, like, fine art installation, I wear, like, 90% of it. I just don't get or care about, but just like a little something here where it's like, oh, like the form language on this one aspect, I think is interesting that I can use. I yeah. definitely look for a lot, like a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if it, when it comes to like, I wouldn't say it's like aesthetic inspiration necessarily, but like looking up things for just like trying to understand, especially because working on Destiny and being pretty new to sci-fi in general. Yeah, just like, trying to build up my visual library of <clears throat> any any sort of like bits and pieces that I can use um, 
And so like, I'll just look up like, uh, what are medical devices? What do they look like from like the 1980s or something? Like what materials do they use? Like they got like that weird eggshell, you know, white kind of stuff and, you know, the arrangement or, you know, stuff like that, I guess. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a big thing. What are those motherland? I don't remember how to do those like motherland looking. Oh, wait, wait, I, forget. I just used gold. I think that was just like a big hack where like I would just do a lot of things in like grays and kind of tint it out, and then I would just do like areas of sort of like gold where it's just kind of like abstract, whatever. Um, hopefully, make the shapes a little better and stuff like that, and like use that to sort of like push and pull elements, you know, forward or backwards and that kind of stuff. And just like a lot of gradients, I think. Here, something like that. Is there a favorite thing that you've uh, designed or contributed to Destiny? Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've only worked on like a couple seasons so far. Uh, favorite thing. <laughs> no, man, I, I don't know. That's that's all. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still sort of like getting my head around just what I think, like you know, what I want the the IP to to look like, to go like you know how I want to push it and that kind of stuff. So getting a handle on that, I think, is still kind of a process for me, for sure. I mean, do you, do you play it at all? Uh, I'm not too into Destiny. So I, I played the first one for like eight hours and I kind of stopped. <laughs> I'm more of a RPG slash strat strategy type of guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, I, that's I what I usually play. And I play some FPS games too, but... That's cool. Um, you know, it's like Halo and Counter-Strike, that, that sort of games. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah I never really played shooters much at all. Um, I did play, you know, a bit just to understand what's going on and just like so much lore and things to get behind yeah it's you know like that dark souls thing where like everything's just written out and not in the game you're like oh man i just need <laughs> yeah. to read this website for that's uh that's the same thing with halo too man and yeah like halo has a lot i mean it's it's a bunch of things yeah now, but. yeah you know what's funny like, is uh like um my whole career i've mostly worked on fps games and that's actually, I don't play it as much as like, I play RPGs and strategy games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, just what kind of PS games? I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even play that many games, period. Uh, I am on Animal Crossing. That's my, it's been my jam for a while. Much uh, how do you like the new one? That's pretty fun. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm trying not to get like, super into it because like every time I play it it'll end up being like you know 500 hours or something stupid right like I just yeah, it's not great but yeah. it's fun I'm just trying to use it just to like unwind every now and then just kind of yeah. fun. I see a bunch of people online where they show off you know their town or whatever and it's it's like they're already done and, <laughs> and they've like I I assume they're you know time travel and all that kind of stuff but I didn't want to do you know, that far Explain what's um hmm. how do I explain what's up? okay um my mind okay so mostly uh, I don't really know what I'm thinking um but it's it's mostly just like I'm I'm thinking 
pretty generally abstractly just like, oh, what sort of, like right now I was just throwing on like a bunch of textures and, and things onto the thing just to give me something to work with. Um, I, um, yeah, like it, it's pretty abstract. It, it's really just like shapes and colors and <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I think the wrong person asked her to do a workshop, man. Um, is there anything specific, I guess, um, that uh, Mario is wondering about? Just sort of. Uh, let me see if he, if he answers. Let us see how far this texture thing is going to go. Uh, here's a question from a couple yeah. people. Uh, yeah. Are there like any specific things that you found invaluable when while you were learning, like some practice or um, you know exercise or whatever? For um, your yeah, definitely. Like okay, so. Yeah, like practice is definitely a thing. Like I, I don't think you can really, you know, go wrong with. Are you like practicing from like photos or is it from like life? Uh, your... So yeah, th that one's a little tougher. I think, so for for me personally, um, like I, 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 I never liked, you know, life drawing or portraiture or like drawing, like anything that's in front of me, I just, like my eyes glaze over. I just couldn't get interested in that. Um, but it is, it is like a, a very like, you know, it's a very useful skill. Um, you can develop it in other ways though. Like if you, if you understand how, you know, the anatomy works in general, I think that goes a fair amount of ways. Um, obviously, because I don't really do much of it, I'm not good at doing, you know, faces or expressions and things like that. That's sort of a blind spot, right? So you do have to be kind of aware of uh, what you're doing. I guess. Um, I mean, there's more to practicing than just drawing all day as well. Um, like it does have to be meaningful. You can't just, you know, if you just draw the same thing over and over and you're not necessarily like, you know, exercising the necessary muscles, right? Like yeah. a lot of it, I feel like it's just mental. Like it's just being able to absorb things into your mind. Like if you understand, you know, um, like if you memorize, I don't know. It was, it was like a thing. I think a friend of mine, he, he was working with, uh, he was working with Goro Miyazaki and he was just, his whole thing was just like, you observe everything around you, right? Like understand what the proportions are for like a keyboard, right? Like just how it's laid out or like, you know, how is the dinner table set up when you go to a restaurant or, you know, the shape of a coffee cup. Like you just sort of absorb <clears throat> all these things until it becomes internalized. And that's like probably a bigger boost than just being able to draw from, you know, life, right? Because you're just drawing from your head, which is, you know, infinitely more useful. Yeah, for sure. It's like building that uh, visual vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, you know, obviously nowadays, it's not as necessary. You can find anything you need online, whatever. It takes a, you know, a couple steps more. But it's something like, if you don't know what you don't know, then. Yeah, I, I still think it, it is so important in that, in that, uh, like every artist, right? We design things a certain way usually. Yeah. As long as you're not looking at someone copying kind of what they're doing, you yeah. usually yeah. have your own voice. And yeah. I feel like sure. all of that is just from your life experience and what you've taken mm -hmm. into your visual library. Yeah. And just like the way you can like synthesize it, right? Like yeah. you can take so many outside influences from things that are just completely unrelated and that would make something like new and interesting for you. Um, yeah. Because, you know, like... I, I've seen your stuff. I'm just like, you're definitely looking at like different references yeah. than a lot of people out there, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know what it would be particularly. Just, yeah, I mean, I guess it's mostly like other artists and things like that. Um, but I think, well, Games in general is not, you know, the most broad uh, aesthetics. So yeah, so that's just like a whole thing. 
I think, yeah, even like what you said, like the fine art stuff, you yeah. know, there's some good stuff there. And even like a lot of the fashion stuff too. Is Yeah, I mean, it's definitely cool. fashion just because being able to understand how to make a dress is like, you know, you can't just like draw it and then like you have to understand like how it's cut up, like that affects how the design would be, where the seams are, you know, like you can understand like what's possible, what's not. Um, like just understanding construction of it for sure, I think is a big thing. And then like seeing how far certain like designers can push it, I think is super handy. So here's a pretty good one uh, by Carlin. Uh, when coming up with ideas for work, yeah. do you prefer to be in active brainstorming mode with a bunch of people or be left alone by yourself to think about it? Initially. Um, I mean, I don't think I often get a chance to brainstorm with other people that much. I mean, we'll, ha we'll have meetings where like, you know, um, like I, you know, kick off meeting for whatever weapon character or something and then you can be like, yeah, I just throw some stuff up. Um, it's not that common, I guess. I uh, I do. I mean, I definitely like getting input from other people uh, in general, especially um, yeah, like especially from like let's say the designer or the director, just to know like what's in their mind um, or like what they sort of envision. It doesn't have to be something that you do. Um, like you never, you don't have to do something that's literal. What's in their mind? Like you can find ways to make it, you know more interesting or something surprising, um, but just like understanding what their intention is, I think helps a lot. So um, yeah, that's that's where like dialogue definitely helps for that kind of stuff as much as possible anyway. Is that answer the question, kind of? Um, oh yeah, yeah, that, I think I should answer it. Yeah, if you if you need to take a break, you know, just let me, you know, just let the class know. Uh, oh, no, it's whatever. Dude. It's fine. This is hardly hard work, right? <laughs> Drawing, like seriously. And I think uh, we'll probably stop at uh, four forty and then do like a twenty minute Q and A session. So sure. Yeah. What time is it right now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a finished demo, dude. Like. Yeah. Whenever we do workshops, no one really does finished demos. <laughs> So, I mean, here's, uh, well, I guess here's, I don't know if no, anyone asked, nobody asked this, I'm sure, but like the whole thing with like speed painting, I'm just not sure how useful that is. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. You can do something in an hour, you probably didn't put a whole lot of thought into it, right? It's either something you rehearsed very well or you just, I don't know. I think, yeah, speed painting was like big back then. I, I think it's nice in terms of like you learn how to it's paint. Useful. Yeah. yeah. But it's Being not, able to like no. iterate, I think that's the skill that it you know helps. And if you just want to get some ideas out, and, you know. okay. but yeah, in the end, like I've never found myself like, oh, I wish I could paint. Well, actually, I do wish I could paint faster, but not not you know, it's not dilute. Not like super I've always good. thought like just quality over quantity, you know. Yeah, I mean, definitely that for sure too. Um, Yeah, like doing too many revisions. Um, although I do find myself doing that sometimes. Um, I just like the longest rough. revision. Just, what was the longest revision you had to do? Longest revision? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know in terms of like time frame, but like I've definitely gone up to like, you know, 40 or 50 different options type of thing. There's yeah. not revisions, right? But you're just like, Keep exploring so you're like okay well here we go and then you just do it yeah, yeah, yeah. For, you know, that's kind of a 
yeah that's what i meant uh exploring the concept yeah 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 because it's sort of like a i don't know until i see it type of thing and you yeah. know we're still not sure and and you know that's that's always a tough one because you don't know how much of that is on your end because you're not communicating you know a certain idea uh properly or if it's just sort of uh I remember I did like a drop pod for Halo. It was like my first concept task. Oh yeah, first one. <laughs> I joined nice. it, and then that took me two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" That's yeah. It was just a drawing too, so it was just like, yeah. that's way too long. Well, I don't know. I mean, it kind of depends. Like some people, yeah, it kind of yeah. It definitely depends though. Like some people do enjoy all that time to like really refine and just sort of. Yeah, like I've seen some concepts where it's like, it's like finished, you know, it's like you can just make it, it's done. Um, like every aspect of it is sort of like fleshed out and refined to the end degree. Uh, I just don't think I'm good at that. Yeah. I definitely get a lot of like diminishing returns after uh, a week or so. But that is me. Chelsea asked, how do you find the energy to draw at home after work? Uh, not always. That's, that's definitely for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. It kind of depends, though. Um, I think Bungie's been pretty good for me just because you don't really force you to. They don't even ask you to crunch or, you know, like, they don't encourage that at all. So it's just sort of, um, yeah, like, their work-life balance is pretty good. So I don't feel super tired out, usually, by the end of the day. Um, and also, it does help if I'm switching out mediums, right? Like, I just, I don't do too much digital stuff after work. Yeah. Um, let's do, like, yeah, like, a, yeah, I've been messing around with, like, crayons and, like, you know, the ink stuff and just, like, sketchbook and, like, painting with traditional stuff. I think that helps. Um, it's just, like, a different mindset, you know? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a bathroom break, but I'll let Misa take over for a little bit. Sure, yeah, yeah. Hello? Hello. Hi. I don't Hi. Okay, hey, how's it going? Was my mic working? Sorry? I was, okay, cool. I wasn't sure if you could hear me. Oh, yeah, no, not here. Yeah. Can. Um, Lisa, right? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, let's see. Here's one question. Uh, do you study from the old masters? If so, what have you learned from them that you have applied to your current works from Samantha? Old masters. Um, I don't know who'd consider old master. I mean, if like you're not alive, or uh, <laughs> I guess I would consider that. I mean, yes, definitely. Like any, I, I definitely look at a lot of sort of traditional painters in general. Um, like uh, sometimes it depends on sort of what project or anything I'm working on. Um, when I was working on <clears throat> the order, 
1886. It was like a Victorian era steampunk thing. So I was looking at like, you know, John Singer Sargent or like Andrew Zorn, or like, mm. you know, artists like that, that really kind of fit. And it just kind of went hand in hand with sort of what I was looking at. Um, and they were, you know, just really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's all, it's kind of evergreen to learn from them. Um, yeah, like, a, I mean, I don't, I don't know how old is old. I definitely like looking at sort of like old, I don't know if I call them masters, but you know, like this old medieval art, you know, you, you see, it's kind of like those like old janky sort of looking creatures where oh, they yeah, don't yeah. like get really developed an aesthetic or anything like that. Uh, I don't know, I really like that. It's not like a specific thing that I uh, take anything from, but it, it's definitely more of a, like a feeling or a vibe mm -hmm. that I get out of it. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Um, what's a normal day for you in terms of working, studying, collecting, reference, making personal work, etc., and how do you balance them from Morgan? Uh, a normal day for me, balancing, oh, sorry, I kind of forgot the question. <laughs> uh, like, uh, like, how do you balance your day with working, uh, yeah. studying, making personal work, reference, collecting, and all that? Right. Um, I don't know if I do that much studying anymore. I mean, I guess everything is studying in a way that like you consume any media, anything with you that, that, that always adds to your sort of like pile of things, um, you know, your visual vocabulary, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't consciously uh, balance anything. Um, with freelance, I think it was hard, much harder just because you don't have set hours, right? So everything yeah. is personal, everything is work, everything is, you know, you're always on, you're always, you know. Yeah, that was, a, that was it can get a little tough if you're not organized, which I'm not. Um, now it's it's pretty okay, just, you know, it's balanced just because I've stopped working because I'm not in the building anymore. And, mm. you know, I just go home and do whatever I want. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time consciously studying, but, I think that's just lack of organization. I think I end up doing a little bit of that organically just because, but, yeah. Hopefully yeah. that helps, yeah. yeah. I'm back. So two people asked the same question at the same time. Oh, uh, yeah. Any specifics you want to improve in your current work? <laughs> uh, everything. Like, there's just, um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if I have, like, a strength or anything. Uh, that's, you know, like I just um, like I would I, I would love to understand composition better, um, color theory in general. Like there's there's definitely specific. Okay, uh, I'll try to think of like one specific thing. Uh, I guess I'd like to like an obvious weakness is doing environmental work. You know, like any illustration I do is, is like completely devoid of real perspective. You know, it's just sort of like illustrative and stylized and just like layered on in a, in a fly graphic way, but it's hardly ever, you know, um, that's definitely a, yeah, that's definitely a weakness. I'm not interested in doing it, but it's still, you know, you want the option, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that, that would definitely be one for sure. I think that answers. Yeah.
are there times where you like start with color first and block out an image with color and then oh yeah, yeah for sure sometimes it'll just be like just like random colors i'll kind of throw in and then i'll kind of like start cutting shapes out of it a little bit um yeah there was that one image um uh, I, I used it in the promotion um oh, yeah. it was like really colorful uh let me, let me try to find it but yeah it was like a like a it's like a woman in the kimono and she has like oh yeah yeah I, yeah, I was like, that's a lot of color compared to like some of the other stuff. So. Yeah, hold on a sec. Let me. Okay. Uh, is this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, it was just like. <laughs> that's crazy. I think, yeah, like I think I had like colors just kind of, let me see. Something like that. Like I had some. Holy it's shit. like a background of another painting I did, and then yeah. I just like, cut out the shape, and then I like just add things on top. And it's like, okay, well, we start like layering things, like, oh, I want to sleep down here. Um, yeah, <laughs> finally yeah. put a face on yeah, it. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, stuff like that. Um, yeah, because like, you know, the, the whole premise of the piece is just like, it's just a textured textile type of thing, and then you just start building forms on top of that, right? And then, you know, just random abstract. Grab on it. So, yeah, I mean that's a version, I guess. Um, I don't know if I do it that often, I guess, because it's more hit or miss, right? You just kind of like burn stuff at the wall all the time. Yeah. Not very. Like you're always waiting for happy little accidents to happen versus something deliberate. I feel like because uh, I work with Sparth for like you know five plus years, six years. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how it works. Does he really? Like, like, all the time? A lot of the time, he's like talking about happy accidents and that's crazy. getting something different. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you know, like Justin Sweet, right? He does a little bit of that where, like, he's literally just like, oh, there's like a smudge on my sketchbook, and he'll just like make something out of it. Yeah. And it's, that's just like, he, I don't want to say he depends on it, but it's like he's just good at finding stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I, I think I, I uh, there was that. a, was not there like a video of like a Mobius thing where it wasn't Mobius doing it, but it was like a Mobius philosophy where you just kind of scribble random lines and just I like, mean, yeah, you can tell because he, yeah, he's like, it's very like stream of consciousness type of thing, right? Yeah, stream of consciousness. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, if you look at like Tarata stuff, I think it's something similar. Like he's obviously being intentional about it, but yeah. he's not like planning it from beginning to end. He's just kind of like letting it go and then he's adjusting as he goes. Um, I don't know. I just think that's kind of fun to do. So this is my personal question then. Uh, yeah. You like Tarada or Kim Jong Ji? Which one? If you have to pick. <laughs> if you have to pick. Oh well, you know, not okay. Fine. I'd pick Tarada. Like he did like original Zelda stuff. Like just he yeah. got me earlier on too. And I do. I think I. There's an aesthetic quality to it. Um, the way he has like kind of like the flow and compositions, like the spacing between like the pools of details and like negative space. I think it's just, it's more appealing to me. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm in the same way. If I have to yeah. pick between them, I think they're both like fucking awesome, but yeah. if I have to I pick mean, one, level is Toronto. like Yeah, sure, for sure. They're both way out there. It's not even, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's like, like a personal I'll level. never, I'll never reach that level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure, why bother? Like I just, I already see it. Like you can just, just keep doing it, it's fine. <laughs> Man, you have to make me two sides. I I actually ask that question a lot though to people because I, oh, I yeah. just do you get a lot of different answers. Yeah, like some people like Kim Jong Ji better, some people like Tarada, so it's it's very yeah. different. Yeah, because they're kind of similar but also different in terms of like their subject matters, you know. Sure. Yeah. And style. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's something like outside of skill like i'm not i guess i'm not that interested in the pure skill of it and since they are both pretty similar skill wise like i just gotta go for the one i think looks cooler right yeah i don't know yeah if you go i don't know if you've been to our school yet but no, there's just I like tarada prints all over the place <laughs> oh shit really yeah you gotta get them to draw on your wall man huh get them to draw on your wall john who get him to draw on your wall Oh, draw on my wall. No, it's too expensive, man. 
I, I think he did like he didn't he do it like giant robot or something was, yeah i love seeing that it's just like a little corner and it's just like you know crazy dragons everywhere yeah dude like if he did something like that i would probably save that like would tear the wall down yeah tear the wall down and cut it out and save that oh yeah for sure it'd be worth whatever pairs you get And I don't know what I'm doing here. This is uh, not very exciting looking, fortunately. Is there anything like specific anyone wants to ask about? I don't know. I can't think of it. So, do you want them to uh, ask you to paint something or what? Uh, just like specific questions or something. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of questions. Off anything super useful, but you know, if they can. Yeah, um, experience. I don't know, whatever works. I guess some of these we have already talked about. Uh, for your personal work, do you sit down to draw because you feel like drawing, then just make whatever based on the abstract shape you generate it, or do you have an idea of the subject before you go to Canvas? Uh, it definitely goes both ways. Um, Usually I don't have like a super firm idea in my head before I, you know, put pencil to paper or anything. Um, yeah, actually, to that previous question about one specific skill, like I do kind of wish I had a, a much more complete idea of what I wanted to do before I even started. I think that would be super helpful. Just save a lot of time and, you know, it's more efficient, I think. But yeah, like I, I, <clears throat> it's like half and half. I might have an idea and then I'll draw something that doesn't match it. So I have to start adjusting <clears throat> or I'll just like start all over and just come up with a new idea. So I'm not sort of um, getting the feeling that I get out of it. So here's another question. Uh, I've noticed a lot of uh, interwoven pieces in your ink line drawing. Do you plan those ahead in the pencil? Or are you just freakishly good at envisioning stuff before you put pen to pen paper? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not like planned super detailed. It's just there would be an area in which I know that I want a certain density of whatever. Um, so I'll just, you know, you just commit one sort of line to it and then you just kind of build on top of it and just kind of layer things on top. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not too bad. Uh, here's more Photoshop question, just yeah. kind of what you did. Uh, <clears throat> when you originally used the magic wand tool to lasso out the form to fill in with the gray, how did you get that lasso so perfect with no anti-aliasing? It's not perfect, I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, it might be the screen's kind of smaller. So. Oh, I, I did, um, yeah, I already kind of I mean, I can show you whatever. Like if I'm just drawing a shape, you know, whatever. And then I, you know, that is like, that's literally the magic wand thing. And then I'll, you know, I'll select outside and then I'll just invert it. It's a control shift I fill it in. Um, you know, it's, it's as bad as, my drawing, you know, like that's, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's not good quality, I guess that's all it is. It's enough for usually what I have to do and you can sort of refine the edges afterwards, you know, it's hardly something I'll ever stick to anyway, so, you know, you shall just like smudge something around, just kind of like, just kind of, Works. You ever thought about uh, publishing like a book with your line drawings, Felipe? Uh, asked. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you did? How can you? Didn't I want to publish a book of like anything. I just want to do something, um, and I never do it. So, 
hoping one day I will. We'll see. Um, Is it more just like, if you're going to do a book, would you kind of make all new materials that people haven't seen? Or is it just a collection of your artwork? I want to, but like, that's just not going to happen, right? Yeah. I think you have to, yeah. It was the same thing with like the Motherland stuff that I was doing, where it's just like, by the time I was sort of done, I was like, I hate most of it, right? So you don't want to make a book out of it anymore. And you want to like go back and redo it because, you know, they're not, you know, they're not consistent. It's not up to a certain quality. And then it's just like, well, you, you'll just never do it then because you're always going to get better than, you know, when you first started a series of anything almost. Yeah. So at least I would hope it would always get better. I don't know. But, yeah, see. but yeah, no, I don't know. It's something I want to do for sure. So we'll see if it actually will. It's definitely like a personal thing where I'm just not good at, uh, you know, discipline myself, figuring out all the logistical stuff. You do any books? Uh, I I don't think I have a strong enough personal style to do that. I don't know. Uh, I've, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I, I do a lot of different styles and things, so it's like... It's like, even if that were true, like, I, I don't think that's necessarily like a bad thing. I mean, I guess as like a, a branding or something, like, it's harder for people to latch onto that, but I do like I, it. Like, people can do all sorts of you know? I think if I were to do it, I might do like, uh, you know, like a book just on drawing my little robot things <laughs> or yeah, sure, a yeah. book on just environments, you know, stuff yeah, you like just that. like theme it too. Yeah, you know, theme it. Yeah. Like I wouldn't say just because you're able to do a lot of things, it's something to hold you back. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Uh, this horoscope, what is your mindset when implying details and texture? Like, for example, when you copy the character and use it as a texture for the golden bits, any more nuggets of knowledge on that topic? Oh, um, I, yeah, there's not a whole lot. I just wanted uh, a texture to play with and I didn't want to go grab one, right? How do you know if like something, let's say, gets overly textured? You know, you've seen like the photo bashy stuff where sure. there's just yeah, way yeah. too much texture, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess like when I'm doing something like this, it's like, first of all, it's, there's like no photo in it, right? I'm just like grabbing my own thing and sort of like skewing it around. So it's not, it won't, it won't get like too dense. And I guess the process is just like, you're painting over it anyway. So it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm not really good at photo bashing either. Like, that was the thing I've been trying to learn a little bit more. It is more accepted now, I feel like, in the industry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you should see some of the crap I do at work. It's like, it's so, like, like, I just slap it on. I don't, like, you know, yeah. I don't even bother, like, you know. Uh, I've always said it. work is work, so it's, there's a well, separate. you know, if you get you can like you can do a line art on like on top or a different view or whatever. It's just like you understand what this material is. You understand like you know what this is supposed to be. You can figure out the connection for like certain things. But, yeah. Um, you can do it like that. Um, but yeah, um, mindset is just yeah whatever. And just slapping some some kind of texture on it just to see. It doesn't always work. Obviously, sometimes it's better just to go clean. And it depends on what you're doing. I think most of what I'm doing is just like kind of organic. It, it you know, it leaves a, it's pretty forgiving for sort of abstraction. So I think that helps. <clears throat> oh, I see a, what's this? Do I ever run into an issue where students want to hire younger, cheaper talent instead of paying someone with more experience? 
Um, I mean, I don't know if I. <laughs> Old enough, I guess. I don't know, like 10 years or so, right? Um, I'm not sure specifically, because um, you never really know if someone is like replaced by a. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, I can be old. No one's going to notice looking at me so like in high school. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm sure it happens like a lot, uh, to be honest. Um, I mean, I, I might have been like, yeah, I might have been like the cheaper talent at some point. Uh, we all might have, to be honest, right? I don't know if, uh, I don't know, Josh, if you're under that, that kind of crap a lot where like you, you see someone like specifically replaced. I feel like it's never one-to-one -one for concept artists. Like, your skill sets never match. No, it's never one-to-one, -one, but I, I think certain studios, if they have a limited budget, they definitely try to hire uh, cheaper people out of college, I would say. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or, you know, if uh, they have some tasks where there's, like, we need to design a bunch of props and do orthos for them, they might yeah. hire someone that's lower level. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So. But, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, that, that does happen. Or, like, you know, you outsource concept or, like, pretty light loads of, you know, doesn't require a whole lot of direction, just something you need to just do, like very obvious things. Um, and it's also, uh, I, always, I always think too, like this industry, there is like a lot of young people coming in that just is really good. Oh yeah, know? I mean. And they're gonna replace some of the older people. Yeah. That That's just how it works. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, honestly, I, like I see, I see like, some people are like super, super good at like in their teenage or something. I'm like, wow, I, I think I, I might have just gotten like my first computer then or something. You know what I mean? Like they do have access to a lot of things, and they're, I think because you know, if you're, I don't know if it's like a, I don't know the generation gap anymore, right? But um, if you are sort of like you grow up with this certain exposure to like all, all this like art and all this sort of like you know information from oh, when yeah. you're a kid. I, I just like he had more time to sort of like um you know marinate and you, you develop like a more sophisticated did you uh thing. did you grow up in the era where there's no internet yet like i mean i definitely remember dial up and things like this stupid ringtone and all that kind of crap and then yeah. you, like, you pick up a phone and you know like you <laughs> screw up someone's you know that thing yeah um, and I, I feel like nowadays like there's just so much information out there you know it's yeah really different I mean, it doesn't mean like they have like the most advantage either. It's like it can be super overwhelming too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's definitely got some downsides. But I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's it's pretty awesome though. Like there's some kids, so I, I think like you just leapfrog, you know, other people in terms of like yeah, just like their their taste or their skills and just all these things. So it's pretty cool. What is this? Yeah, uh, hopefully that helps. <clears throat> Lily said, please don't think you're old. <laughs> That's, I, I don't care, dude. Uh, I'd rather not get carded all the time, so I don't, I don't mind being a bit older. You know, I, I stopped getting carded like a couple of years ago. Really? <laughs> yeah, I used to get uh, carded, and then now I think I just look old now. So <laughs> it's more like your attitude, maybe. Nah. You think like an old man now. I, I feel like it might have to do something to do with like after I started this school, I had to do so much work, and I was like really stressed out because I was yeah. working too full time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I probably just I probably lost a few years of my life there. <laughs> You, you kind of did like the whole Obama thing where like, you know, yeah. <laughs> four years you just want to like create or something. Probably. I don't know. You look the same to me, but, you know. Because I see you often enough, I wouldn't notice. Uh, I do.
do you always stick with your comfortable style or do you venture out and try like different styles like mm. comics or anime that type of stuff let's see i mean i yeah i don't think i go like super outside my comfort zone but like you know i do i have drawn like some super anime kind of crap back in the day for sure um i think i can still do it probably um yeah i definitely like try to do stylized stuff um did i um i didn't show my work right no, that, but should I sh well, you probably have seen some of it, but yeah, you, you feel free to show it. We still have uh, uh, some time before the Q and A. Sure, I'll. Yeah, I can, I can also, I did buy your uh, that mob psycho print you did. <laughs> yeah, but then you didn't I know didn't. It was like an anime I didn't movie. even know that was an anime, and then I went and watched it, and I was like, "Wow, this is really good." <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's actually pretty fun. All right, let me see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I mean, like sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll do like stupid stuff like this, where it's just like you know, stylized kind of pieces of everything, or like I'll try a different type of, um, you know, like rendering lighting thing. Like my personal, like I don't usually like to do this type of thing where I'm kind of just get like proper lighting. I always tend to stylize a lot of what I do, like this kind of crap where it's just like dark and, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know, I guess it kind of depends. What's comfortable though, I guess. I mean, definitely like a lot of the ink stuff when I was doing this kind of crap, it was um, like when I, I first started, it was like an inktober thing and I never really did inks much before. That's not like a style, but I guess just sort of like the act of using a medium that I, I never really liked, I guess, to begin with, but like trying to like push through and do it for like a month, take that. It's like as far as I'll go in terms of like pushing my comfort zone. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that answers the question. I don't know if that that's what you mean. But, yeah. yeah, I think so. Just I gotta update this thing too. Oh yeah, here here's another style. <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I remember I did a bunch of like Adventure Time fan art, which is just like <laughs> like a Frazetta thing and like a, oh, like a Lovecraft thing going on. It's like a Yoshi Taka Mana. Uh, that's so stupid. Man, I was super into that show back in the day, man. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, I mean, it still holds up. You like uh, Rick and Morty? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'm caught up on that stuff. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm super fun. Such an internet show. Uh, yeah, anyway, so. Uh,
Okay, so in five minutes, we'll probably just uh, go to the Q&A. Yep. It's almost um, time. Did you get like a like a work computer from uh, number three? Me? No. Oh, well, I'm not there anymore. So. But oh yeah. When what I, talking about? Yeah. Really? When I go to Riot, they'll they'll have like a laptop for me because I'll be in the yeah. process of moving. Yeah. And so I won't have my own computer, so they'll give me a computer to yeah. work on. Well, that's nice. Same thing. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. This is the first time I'm like gonna join a company and gonna be working from home for like a couple months, yeah. uh, a couple weeks. I mean. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, we recently got a new uh, a full timer for uh, stuff, and you know, during our quarantine period and stuff like that, and just got uh, like some guy, just like a courier came with like he's got the gas, like the mask on, everything in like a box, and he's just like, here, here's a PS4, welcome to Bungie. It's like, okay, <laughs> here you go. It's, can't step in the building yet, but at least you get something to play with. Yeah, when I joined 3 for 3, none of the artists got a free Xbox, but they actually gave interns free Xboxes. Was it like a timing issue or what? Yeah, it's probably a timing issue. So. Yeah. I mean, that always kind of sucks if you just kind of like missed it. But. Barely use mine though. Uh, Robert Roberto D says, "How many styles can someone do without neglecting other styles?" Uh, I don't know, it's a subjective thing, I guess. Hmm. Without neglecting, I mean, in my mind, I don't, I don't think you can. You don't have to neglect any of them as much as you want. But um, I mean, there's obviously a time cost to it. I guess if you're doing multiple styles. And, um, I do find that. Um, you know, like especially recently with the, all the 3D stuff, mm -hmm. it is hard to balance like getting really good at 3D and then getting really mm -hmm. good at painting or drawing. And you kind of have to like, because they're so different, you know? You kind of have to choose your lane a bit, right? Yeah, you have to choose your lane a bit. And, you know, if you're deep into 3D, I think you get weaker at the drawing and painting. Yeah, do you think? Oh. That's what I'm a little bit afraid of. Like, it's just sort of, yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah, I'm it's, it's a really weird thing for me right now. I'm just... Yeah, I know I need to learn even more of it, but it's just like, at least for me. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I mean, because, you know, there's obviously such benefits to it, like being able to understand 3D forms in a more concrete way does help your design, right? But, yeah, and I think if you want to be an art director, like for concept artists, it is good to know 3D, you know? Oh, I mean, you, you definitely need to know that, that way, you know, you can tell people what to do with more accuracy, right? If, if that's yeah. Something you really want to do. Yeah, the technical side even. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it can be tough when you're just, uh, yeah, it's like you just don't have enough knowledge to be able to push back on certain things or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess the other thing, because I, I hear from uh, other friends just sort of working in 3D for too long does sort of, like working in any one tool for too long will start to like, you, you get into a groove, you know, you have a certain, like you only come up with certain ideas or forms because of how you work, you know? Like yeah. when I draw just on my own freehand without using reference, I'm gonna end up using a lot of the same shapes, right? That's why a lot of my personal crap like looks similar. Um, so like using reference is a good way to like kind of push back. Like I feel like if you do something in 3D, just cause you're used to like 
refining things a certain way, like it, you'll end up doing something kind of the same every time, right? Mm -hmm. Like you'll have the same solutions to do uh, every problem. Yeah, but I don't know, because I've done it, so I'll have to figure it out when I get there. I mean, how much 2D, 3D do you do right now if you had to, like, proportion it up? Uh, I think if you're talking about, like, 343 three before I left, the last, like, half a year to a year, it was a lot of uh, 3D and then blocking it out in 3D, even finishing a concept in 3D or just drawing over 3D. Yeah. yeah. But that's, like, environments and hard surface stuff. So you're actually designing it in 3D? Oh, yeah. Now, a lot of the times I'll do that now. Yeah. Like the most I've done is just sort of like 3D blackout shape just so I can draw a couple angles and then like I'm still designing it on paper or on screen, I guess. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, I, you know, for weapons, I might do like a little sketch, but for environments, I just go straight to 3D for Halo stuff. I mean, that just makes sense, I feel like. Because, you know, Halo is like the style so established and we've yeah. figured out all the styles. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to, we just have to build it, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I just mean like, especially for a game, it's, it's interactive, right? Like your camera's not locked. So you yeah. want to so, see the environment yeah. all around. Um, so I give my 3D files to the, like the environment guys. Yeah. And then they can just run around and test it. And they like, for the weapons I mock up, they just put it in the game to test. Yeah, it. you can just like throw it down as a block model, right? Yeah. yeah that's pretty handy. Yeah, that's, but, that's one thing I, I think is like. But you know, to be honest, so I, I still like 2D stuff. Sure. So when I'm doing my personal work, I tend to gravitate towards more painting and drawing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. Like, you know, what's efficient and what's fun, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think we have 20 minutes left. So you want to yeah. just move on to the Q&A? Sure. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, you can keep yeah, working well, on this, but I'm just going to open up, you know, whatever question you guys have, just ask uh, Tobias. You can even look at the chat if you want. Yeah. So. I guess um, there is a one question I want to ask from uh, Angela. She's not, she couldn't make it to this class. Okay. She wanted to ask you, uh, sure. how do you continue to inspire and push yourself when you're surrounded by extremely skilled peers and masters? Like what is the mindset people should have early on and later in their career in the entertainment industry to maintain a healthy mind and avoid burnout? She's saying like, how do you inspire yourself with amazing artists around you? Uh, no, I, how do you continue to inspire yourself? So like, I guess the way I see a question is, uh, how do you not feel down about yourself when you're oh, surrounded okay. by so <laughs> many good artists? Yeah. yeah, cause in my mind, I'm like, you're inspirational just by being there. Like that's all mm -hmm. there's like, there's so many good artists around, right? Like that is inspiring. Um, yeah, like a motivation thing, I guess it sounds like. Um, Oh, I don't know, man. That's that's tough and very personal. Um, <laughs> I try not to think about it too much. Like, it's I, hard. You know, <laughs> it's like, like a. I, I guess it depends on like how you see yourself and just like. I mean, hmm. yeah, I don't know. I, I think all artists go through that though. That I guess so. question your ability, but I think you just have to be confident and be passionate. Okay? Maybe. Yeah, it's just sort of. And like, you know, when you see something, like there's a difference between seeing like artists who are like super skilled, but you're, you're not interested in being anything like them or whatever. And then of course there are some artists who are like, oh man, uh, like I wish I did that or I wish I was them or something like that. Um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, on an emotional level what you can do, but I mean, I, I would try to see it as more of a, you know, like a, like a learning opportunity really, right? It's like, it's kind of like a path force ahead against you. Um, mm. I don't know, man. That's, oh, that's so tough. Is this Angela who? Is this Angela Sung? So, uh, no, no, Angela Fam, I think. So. Oh, I don't, I guess I don't know. Yeah, it's, you don't know. She's like a student, I think. So, mm. so I was like, is this Angela Sung? Why is she worried? No, she's, she's good. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, she was in my class at Art Center, too. Oh, is she? Uh, I do know her. Yeah. I like arts and her kids, man. Seriously. Yeah, it's Everywhere. a lot of us. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. 
Uh, if you meet the 10 years ago you and you could give him one tip of a lesson, what would it be? Oh, uh, by Ten Arturo. Years Ten years ago, I just started working at Ready to Done, huh? Um, I don't know. Uh, don't get hit by a car. Yeah, well, still standing, luckily. Uh, hmm. Like art wise, I guess. Like, oh, um, actually, I don't know, man. It's like, it's like, feel like a generalized, like, just do better. Like, you know, like, I, I was definitely pretty complacent and sloppy um, earlier on. Um, it's, it's like a mental thing, and I don't know if that's something you can just give advice and you'll be better, right? Like, that's some people aren't in that stage, not ready to hear that. They're not in a place where they can fully understand that. So. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. It's like a study more thing, or uh, I don't know. Uh, here's another one. Any advice for getting that first job when studios say they like your work but need to go with more experienced candidates? <laughs> yeah, um, more experience, huh? Uh. That's tough. Um, we're talking specifically concept art. Um, yeah, I'll just say like concept art. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of the heavy lifting is just in your portfolio. Um, experience doesn't count necessarily as much. I mean, it does matter. I do think it does matter uh, for a bit. Like, there's a lot of interpersonal skills that you will need to do your job well. Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't suggest in like, concept art but like when you, you make a portfolio is it's essentially like you're making like a mock experience for yourself right you're making up like a fake game like I, I think that's like every art center's portfolio right you just have like a some kind of ip that you pretended you you made like that's yeah a pretty good um barometer of like where their skills are at like you know how well they're able to you know design think problem solve all that kind of stuff yeah yeah i agree it's definitely portfolio and pie people scale that's like yeah and then I mean, I don't know if that's, no, well, I mean, is your advice just like fly somewhere else if they do not convinced? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Fly somewhere else or yeah, try yeah. to improve your own work, I guess, and not take another option. <laughs> that's a tough one, though. I don't, I don't know specifically. Man, there's a lot of questions now. Uh, oh, really? Let me, <laughs> let me try to uh, organize it. Or uh, you can look at the chat, too, if you want. Yeah. Um, okay, well, the last one was, how important do you say is connections and networking? Do you have a lot of networking where you're hired purely on skill level? I mean, you'll never know for sure if you're hired purely on anything, right? Um, unless they just hired you without interviewing you or something, I guess. Um, I mean, I think, are we just talking about networking in terms of for getting hired? Because I'm sure that is, I'm sure that's pretty important. Um, I mean, just being able to get your portfolio in front of anybody, I guess, would be the most important first step. But, I don't know, man. I do feel like skill does speak for itself. I don't know if you feel any different. Um, Are you talking to me or? Yeah, like, uh, I think skill. It's easy to find work, right? Or find to, people, right? Like, to get well, I don't know, art station. I think to get in the industry, mm -hmm need some networking you need to know people right i feel like and you, you need to be good and you need to know people yeah. but then once you get in i think a lot of it is just knowing someone right yeah and still be good yeah because so, i feel like a lot of the jobs I, i've gotten it's just people i've worked with mm -hmm. and they're like oh he was really good to work with and yeah. do you want to join our team a lot of it's just like timing right like you don't know oh yeah a lot of it's time even like they don't necessarily post it immediately when they need someone right like they might have been looking around for like months or something oh yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. most yeah. studios that i've known they they always look internally first yeah because friends you want to hire someone that like the rest of your team is excited by if they have someone they want to get you know just kind of go with that or whatever it is yeah um yeah so i mean networking is pretty important um I don't know what ratio, what proportion, but yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird because like, even for me, I'm, I'm not like trying to go out there. 
to make friends to get a job. Yeah. It's like my friends just happen to work in the same industry. I mean, yeah, there's not a whole lot of us. Like, you know, all we yeah, just hang out with each other. <laughs> yeah, we just hang out with each other and then we yeah. just refer each other. That's yeah. kind of how it is, yeah. you know. Pretty much. I think it does happen organically for sure, yes. especially after you get first job or, or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Would you say like go to like GDC or something or like eat? Uh, I don't so, know. Eat, so, you know, like one of those. Yeah. They went to GDC and they got a job. Uh, like David yeah. Heidoff, he's like one of our really good concert artists at 343. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. He actually, he went to GDC and that's how Spark saw his work. All right. Uh, I never went. I heard it's pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I, I mean, it's fun if you just, you know, like you go out, you go there, all the studios and your friends are there. So you just go and hang out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounds like. Um, let's see. I'll try to hit up another one. How fast do you have to be at work? I don't know if we expect to use every day. Um, hmm. Well, that definitely, um, it differs per studio and per project. And, you know, it depends on a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> how fast though? Like, it's not like you have to finish a concept necessarily in one day. Sometimes you do. It, it really depends. Like some of them are just very light things like, oh, just do modification on this gun or something or like you know can you do like a bunch of pallets or, or you know like things like that um, it, it really does depend on, on the task um, and that's very subjective between you and whoever your you know your manager director the rest of your team is uh here's a, a number uh, 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 here's another question from, uh from james uh he said, uh, do you sometimes scan in traditional drawings into Photoshop if you're really concerned about the draftsmanship of your lines? Oh, um, I mean, I've, I've, hmm, I guess I haven't really done that. Um, I've done, like I've scanned very rough sketches from a sketchbook because I actually kind of like the mess that it starts off with as like a starting point for a painting or something. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of like clean line work for painting into Photoshop. Um, if, if, I guess if I was concerned about my draftsmanship, I would just go slower on, on digital. You know, like that's, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't show you a good example for sure. Um, but yeah, like you just, you should just be more, yeah, I would just be more careful, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, draftsmanship wouldn't be the main issue. It would just be more like the feeling of, you know, drawing like there's a certain friction there's a certain like nuance to it when you're drawing on, on pencil and paper versus on a screen even if you get like little like when you get those like skins or whatever on a screen so like it you know it rubs like a little oh yeah, yeah. more i don't know it just none, none of that really works for me yet i guess but i just get used to it it's fine you're probably drawing glass now no big deal. <laughs> yeah hopefully hopefully that helps um okay there's one that says how do you deal with work assignments that you're not so comfortable with in terms of practice uh totally out of your comfort zone yeah i'd say oh <laughs> um i don't know man if they're already paying me for it then you know i'm just gonna go in and start trying it out um could ask for time to study i mean that time is sort of baked in you'll just have less time to experiment or whatever but we will just learn on the job right like i have be doing some environments at work, not heavy, you know, heavy loads of it. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll just kind of have to do it. I mean, I think your first job doing anything um, in concept art, you just jump in and try to figure it out, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully it helps. I mean, okay, so actually there's another thing for like, if say in the case of 3D environment, or just environments, you can, you can ask, like as an option, you can ask a 3D environment artist, like, can you help me by blocking this out or whatever it is? And I can like draw on top of that or things. If, they, if you're worried about sort of, uh, you know, your perspective not being good. Like I've done that where I've just drawn on like a block out type of thing. You know, people use Google SketchUp. That's like an easy one. It's like really lightweight, it's really fast. Uh, yeah. do it, I guess. Any other? Uh... Yeah, there's one from Adrian. 
That's oh, yeah. Okay. Good, I think. Feels like it's worth this empty. Adjective for group. I see. Um, <clears throat> so I, um, yeah, like my process has always just been not very formalized. So like a mood board, I guess I haven't actually, I haven't really made many mood boards, um, like specifically for an illustration I have in mind. Um, at least if you're talking about any of my personal work, um, if it's for concept art, it, it would just be reference pages. So I guess it's not a mood board. But, um, what does it look like? It, if it was like, so if I'm doing just a personal piece and I have an idea in my mind, it's pretty often it would be sparked by a couple images or ideas that I've seen before. So if I've seen, I don't know, like an image of like a certain hair sock or you know, a, a, an object that's like, a, you know, kind of, I don't even know what it is, whatever. Um, or even like a certain like item of clothing or something, or like a pose. Um, I guess it it would it would essentially be that. It'll just be like sort of disparate parts, where like oh like I enjoy the feeling of this pose with this. It might even just be like a, something simple as like it's just a specific animal and and what feeling remove that evokes for me personally. Um, and then it could be something where like. Uh, the way the lighting is in a specific photograph or painting or, you know, the color palette of, you know, anything. Um, yeah, nothing, generally nothing too direct, but they all do feed in, in uh, uh, I guess, various aspects. And they don't always translate into the full, like, final piece as well. Um, I don't, I don't know, yeah, I don't know what would be a good <clears throat> suggestion for how, what you, if you feel your work is empty or, you know, lacking in, in mood. Um, like very, without being too like prescriptive, like very obvious things for me is like, I like to go darker um, in general. Like I don't want my things to be well lit. Like that has like an inherent mood to it. Um, the lighting isn't generally, you know, something that's coming from the sky that's like top down. I think that it, that invokes like uh, evokes a certain mood, uh, certain colors they would use. You know, I like ninety nine percent of the time I'm using some form of like tinted grays and just like primary colors like red, yellow, and blue. That's it, um, and in like varying proportions and things like that. That's kind of style, kind of mood, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, I think exploration and just finding a lot of like inspirational images, I think would be the best thing I can think of. Cool. Okay, so I think we have like three minutes left. So um, I have like some quick questions. Uh, yeah. What book would you like to illustrate as a dream job, if there is one? A book? Um, That's that. I don't know. I mean, like, oh, you saw that Dune thing that came, like, Dune would be fun. I think oh, that would Dune, be fun. yeah, that would yeah, be cool. For sure. I really like, um, do you know Elric? It's like a Michael Morka. He does, yeah. like, these sort of, like, fantasy type things. Um, there's, like, a whole, there's a whole bunch, but, like, it's, it's like this, it's like this, like, you can sort of tell if I'd be into it. It's like this, this like, sky in black armor. He's, like, white, he's, like, albino. He's got red, he's kind of looks like the witch with everything. And he's, like, <laughs> He's constantly so just, like dying and calling upon like the chaos lords and stuff like yeah. that. It's, it's like super fun. I love it. And he's so like, everybody bad. he touches like dies, you know, it's just, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's pretty metal. Um, I love it. I think so like I visually I would, I'd be into that. So in the chat says I was named after him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And then uh, I guess the last question before we just ended, uh, mm -hmm. someone just asked this to, uh, do you typically like silence music or TV podcasts while you work? Uh, man, that's tough. I don't think I actually, um, yeah. So I think I work best in silence, but then I, it's kind of like OCD or something. Like I, I always feel like I want something. Like I do run a lot of podcasts 
um, yeah, it's, it's mostly like a podcast thing. Like I, I like the feeling of hearing talking in the background or something, whatever that is, like talking that you can ignore, right? Like half the time I'm not even listening to what's going on. Um, but you know, there's that. And, um, yeah, like music actually pretty rarely, I feel like, I don't know. Do you actually listen to music though? Or like, yeah, but like not, not when I'm working, I just feel like it, um, yeah. it does distract me. Cause I'm just like, Oh, I'm not working. Like, I don't know. Like I'm too relaxed and I just want to like stop working or something <laughs> like it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. I think it pushes me up. Um, I think I technically work better in silence. So we're like, you know, they have that, I think they did a study where it's like where people listen, you feel like you're working better just because like you have distractions, but like your actual output is actually lower. You just feel like you're more productive because you don't notice. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of agree with that. Like I work with music all the time. I, yeah. I'm working with music all the time, but I think I do my best work when it's silent. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, I just, yeah. I mean, I do it. I'm just miserable or whatever or bored, but yeah. Uh. Well, I mean, yeah, thanks for doing the workshop, man. Like, yeah, no, it was really good. And thanks, um, thanks for asking me, man.